Welcome everybody, Film Fan 108 here, and you know I heard a rumor. Yeah, I heard a little bit of a rumor that a particular sale is back. All that dollar deal goodness, baby, is finally back. The Hollywood blockbusters, the ridiculous B-movie cheese, movies that make you say, what the fuck? Yes, all of it is back, baby. The DVDs, the Blu-rays, all for a dollar each. Oh, damn, did I miss it. Yes, indeed, I did, man. Oh, it's back, and hopefully back in a big, bad way. We are at the Dollar Tree location, baby. Yes, indeed, we are. Oh, all those dollar deals, baby. I cannot wait. I just wonder what we're going to find this time. Some interesting new selection. A fair amount of DVDs, maybe a great amount of Blu-rays. You never really know until you head inside. But let's hope we see some great dollar deals this time around. Let's hope we find some really great stuff. <sighs> Only for a dollar, baby. Let's head in. Wait a second. So I'm in here guys and I'm looking at this and I could have sworn that the weekly wow this time around was the physical media DVDs blu-rays all that one dollar deal goodness but I'm seeing uh, like stuff for your car <laughs> like weird like solar stuff that you put inside your car and it kind of hey this is cool and all, but where's the physical media? I could have sworn there was physical media goodness. I heard there was supposed to be physical media goodness. Where is the physical media goodness? I don't know, guys. I just don't know where it is. So wait a minute, guys. I thought there was a Dollar Tree sale happening, right? I heard rumors. Another Dollar Tree sale is coming, Dollar Tree DVDs and Blu-rays, so I'm here, but there is no Dollar Tree DVDs and Blu-rays. There's no physical media here at all. Kind of odd. you think they would have them. Unless I'm here early. And I think you know what that means. Ah, yes, the back room of the Dollar Tree, baby. Yes, indeed, I am back in the back room. <laughs> indeed, I am. In. And they said, oh, indeed they did. They put them all in a cart for me, guys. Look at that. Holy shit, wow. Look at that. That's like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, like 12-ish or more boxes of media? Are you kidding me? Oh, I'm going to have a damn good time checking these out. A ton of media to check out. Let's not waste any time, guys. Let's dive right in with the first four boxes of this mega, mega sale here at the Dollar Tree, baby. Let's start it off with a little Cat Blue with Jane Fonda and Lee Marvin. I don't think I've ever heard of this movie. I swear to God. I didn't really know Jane Fonda really ever did westerns, to be honest with you. This is really blowing my mind right now, guys. Holy shit. The sleeper hit of 19... Declared an instant classic. Lee Marvin. Really? Wow. No, I'm serious. Like, this really intrigues me, guys. I'm, no lie. Like, Lee Marvin and Jane Fonda in the same movie together. That's wild. I've never heard of this one. I mean, I'm not a Western aficionado by any means, but I do know Westerns here and there, but... Damn! Wow, that's nuts. That's absolutely crazy, guys. This might be a, pick a pickup. Just to see Jane Fonda in a Western, this is in in infamous. It's gotta be. I've never heard of it. Dude, that's really wild. Yo, that's cool. For a dollar, that might be worth it, man. They also have the better half. 
the afterlife has its ups and downs. I like that. Sort of the angel and the devil debating between one another. He's just kind of sitting there like, eh, good, bad. I, I still win in the end. Of course, man. When a freak treadmill accident sends Lisa Ryan crashing through the window of the gym, finds herself waking up in the afterlife as if she meets her guardian angel, Daniel. Oh, okay. Who gives her an insight into her real life? Her teenage children are being bullied. She has been ignoring her loving husband. And she's been going together insufferable. Oh, okay. Be better half. Interesting. So she goes to the afterlife and her guardian angel kind of tells her to, to be a better person. She's kind of, kind of already, already dead. <laughs> a little too late to be a better person, dare I say, man. Very interesting. The better half. No, I've, I've never heard of this one. I do like Chris Parnell, though. He's he's not he's not perfect as an actor, but I kind of like his comedy though. Hmm, interesting comedy that one is. Not that they have World Series 2017 Blu-ray. Not half bad. They got that. They have Home is where the heart is uh, with John C. McGinley. Oh, wonderful! It's never too late for a new start. <laughs> All right. Oh, look at that! Really nice, heartwarming moment with the horse oh of course what can go wrong family is what you make it disillusioned actress sunny returns to her hometown of bent arrow texas to attend her mother's funeral and provide guardianship for a half-sister she never knew the dusty old town is struggling to stay alive but maintains its quaint quirky charm it provides solace for an ex-nfl player butch of course his name is butch who is coping with a heart-wrenching loss by painting watercolor postcards at a roast what the hell <laughs> what Honey and Butch bond over their mutual relationship with Cotton and Cotton. Well, that's interesting. I was not really prepared for this. Like, going back with the guardianship and an ex-NFL player who who copes with his life by painting watercolor postcards. <laughs> what? That's wild, man. What the hell is this? That's kind of crazy, man. Okay, it's a little heartwarming romance western tale. Uh, sure. Oh, okay. And then they've got, hmm, Beauty and the Beast with Vincent Cassell. Huh. No, I don't think, I've, I mean, I've heard of a lot of Beauty and the Beast movies. I mean, the, the live-action remake, of course, the Disney classic animated film. Of course, that old-school TV show with Ron Perlman, if I'm not mistaken. That one, but there's some that I haven't heard of. This is definitely one of them. Those Love Fairy Tales by Christopher Cross, Brotherhood of the Wolf. When a struggling merchant assembles upon a magical domain of the fearsome beast. Ah, Vincent Cassell plays the, the beast. Okay. Where is the youngest daughter, Belle, bravely sacrifices herself. Okay. So it's really pretty much like almost the Disney classic, just a little bit more of a different take than we're used to. This is kind of fascinating. I've never heard of this one. I love Vincent Cassell, though. Really, really great actor. Man kind of interesting. I don't know. This kind of intrigues me. Beauty and the Beast. I don't know what I'm expecting with this, but it's got to be better than that Disney live action remake, right? I mean, maybe? <laughs> interesting design for the Beast, though. I don't know about this one. Kind of looks fascinating to me. Hmm. Right now, that might be worth it. And they got High Voltage. They've got, oh, oh, oh Abduction with Scott Atkins, the Blu-ray. The clock is ticking for the human race. Oh, from the executive producer Roger Corman, really? Whoa, look at that. The pulse pounding thriller gets pits two strangers against a nefarious alien force with the future maker. What the fuck? <laughs> really? I was so not thinking that by looking at this cover. I thought it was some sort of like espionage action thriller. It turns into like they're they're fighting aliens and shit. What the hell? Dude. Well, that's kind of crazy. I don't know. This could be kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. I'm liking more Scott Atkins. I really am. I, I, crazy enough, man. I mean, when I first started seeing Scott Atkins like, in movies, I thought, oh, this guy is like a cheap ripoff of S Seagal or Van Damme or some shit. And I just kind of wrote him off. And now I'm sort of finding that I'm actually liking more and more of the stuff that he's done. I really have, man. It's kind of wild. 
This is a very interesting take. A weird alien race. Huh. Look like they're just pasty white with different eyes. <laughs> Jeez, kind of like me. I'm going to just... Boy, is that like my home race? Because I'm like really pasty white, guys. <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. This could be cool. I do. I'm liking more Sky Atkins. So this might be cool. I mean, the Blu-ray. And it also comes with with the extended director's cut. It could be interesting. I don't know. That could be kind of cool, actually. At that, they got Adventures at the Chocolate Factory we've seen before. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. They have Selfie Man. Oh, shit. Oh, my God, dude. I've seen this movie. Holy shit. I've seen this film, guys. Oh, my God. I can't believe this is at the Dollar Tree. I mean, it, not going to lie, it kind of deserves to be at the Dollar Tree, but it's a really bad horror movie, man. About this chick that that finds like you know the, these entries in her cell phone and and they come from like deep within the web and there's this sort of en entity that's stalking her and and coming after her and it's oh it's so terrible <laughs> oh my god it's so bad dude the effects are really terrible the the really bad creature almost looks like like if if Uncle F Fester started to fast and then like and like he started to fast and like really became really really like sickly thin like that's basically what what you get from this fucker oh my god it's so bad god i mean what do you expect with a name like selfie man i mean just saying guys but jeez it does deserve to be here no no lie man i mean what is worse the bye bye man slender man or selfie man shit I don't know if I could pick. And that's the horrifying part. They're all bad. <laughs> oh, shit. For a dollar, I'd maybe give it a chance. But just no, man. This thing is trash, dude. Wow. God, I haven't seen that since I watched it. And I really don't want to revisit it. Not going to lie. Um, Dark Was the Night. We've seen that before. World Series 2017. The DVD. The Chocolate Factory. The Jungle Bunch, another one of those really sort of unknown Dollar Tree animated movies. We, we've seen a lot of these ones before, man. And now we're seeing even more of them. God, they just come out of the woodwork, dude. The Jungle Bunch. Seems really interesting. I mean, the animation looks okay. Hmm. All these wild ones, I'll tell you. That one, they got... Prolonged exposure with Dean Kane, which I know we've definitely seen this before, man, with Dean. God, my God, Dean Dean Kane, dude. I remember Dean Kane from, like, you know, the, the Superman show, Lois and Clark, man. And that is a great, great show, man. And he's done some really good movies. And then he kind of just went down the shit or all these straight-to-DVD movies, which are pretty much garbage, dude. Ah, man. Man, what happened to Dean? Ugh. Move, movies like this is what happened to him. What am I talking about? Uh, then they've got... Oh, Ploey, Two Chicken to Fly. I know we've definitely seen this one before. This is another one of those really strange Dollar Tree animated movies. And another one of these. Damn, man. I mean, good voice cast. John Stamo, Sean Astin, and Jerry Garcia. But... Man, just these weird ones that just get made and end up at the Dollar Tree for some reason. Uh, those... I have Anthem of a Teenage Prophet. We've seen that before. World Series. Ah, the Humanity Bureau with Nicolas Cage. My man, Nicolas Cage. I gotta admit, this movie, not Nicolas Cage's best. We've got a little bit on the weak side. It's got some decent action in it, and and Nicolas Cage is kind of cool in it. But, you know, if, if you're looking for really great Nicolas Cage, this is not really the one I'd say. I mean, go for something like... Mandy or Face Off or the new one Willie's Wonderland. I think that's re really good. This one is a little too serious, Nick Cage, f for me. There's a lot of different shades of Nick Cage. Like there's crazy Nicolas Cage. There's funny Nicolas Cage. There's there's bad shit insane Nicolas Cage. There's dramatic Nicolas Cage. And sometimes I like dramatic Nick Nicolas Cage, like Leaving Las Vegas, which is really good. And then other ones like Humanity Bureau, where I'm like, yeah, it's okay. Doesn't really float my boat, but. It's, it's got some moments. Not bad, though. Then I have... What the hell? Pro Wrestling's Chick Fight. 
volume one age female pro wrestling tournament best female wrestlers from around the world winner to be determined in a 10 foot steel cage match <laughs> look at that oh my god look, look that's great holy shit christina ricci what the wait christina ricci's here Tiffany, Nikki Rocks, Princess Shuge, Haley Hatred, Cheerleader Melissa, Candice LeRae. What the? Don't let the name fool you. These girls not only look hot, they can also give you the beating of your lives. These women are wrestling together for chick fight. Yo. Oh my god. Man, this has to be really cheap. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie, this is cheapo. I mean, for a dollar, what do you expect? But damn, man. God, see, I used to watch wrestling back in the day, man. I mean, 1985 to around 2001, 2002, give or take. And I used to love it, man. I religiously, I mean, I bought the magazines. I was watching all the pay-per-views. I was hardcore a fan, man. And after a while, I sort of lost interest. And I think I lost interest because it wasn't what I remembered. It was changing and not changing into something that I technically liked. So... I decided to sort of cut loose. Uh, some people say to get back into wrestling. Some people say, like, AEW is really good. Maybe. Maybe. But, like, the chick fight stuff is kind of interesting, man. I mean, I was a big fan of, of like, the old school wrestling ladies back in the day. I mean, I mean, China was kick-ass and a whole lot, a lot of other people. I don't know if these people could really compete with the likes of China back in the day, maybe. Yeah, they'd get their ass handed to them. <laughs> Let's be real. That's, that's an odd one, man. And then they've got... Help! I drugged my parents! Of course you did. Good luck with that one, kids. We, we've, we've seen this one before. Distorted, which you've seen, the Blu-ray. The Day Henry Met Season 1? Hmm. Oh. That's the only face a mother could love. <laughs> I don't know. I've never heard of this one. 26 episodes. Huh. Well, good one for the kids, apparently. And then they have... Heaven and Hell, which I know we've seen that before. Anthem, Distorted. Ah, Ninja and Ninja 2. Now, I bought this during the last sale, I believe. And I've started to watch these movies and they're actually really good man scott atkins is really great in in these films man i like the action the martial arts stuff it's really great like the i was ready to be like i don't know how these movies are going to be they're actually surprisingly really good man and scott atkins is awesome in them am i finding more scott atkins love what the hell can i tell you man they're not bad and dark was the night and high voltage Ooh, Frankenstein. I know we've definitely seen this one before as well. We've seen that. Ah, Batman Ninja. We have seen this but before as well. But I got to admit, man, I mean, a Blu-ray of Batman Ninja for a dollar, that's a really, really great deal, man. Yeah, that's a solid one, man. For that, that's pretty cool. That, ah, the Belko Experiment. I bought this, I believe, the last sale, if not the one before that, I bought this. Love, love the Belko Experiment. This is a really, really great, solid horror comedy. Definitely in the vein of Battle Royale, as it says, meets Office Space. Definitely a very accurate description. Love this movie, man. Written by James Gunn. It's got a lot of really great black hum humor in it. And I got to admit, man, the deaths and the gore, fantastic. Dude, Belko Experiment is awesome. You've never seen it before. Definitely see it. If you see it at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, pick it up, man. Uh, there they've got ooh spider-man the new animated series the mutant menace oh nice look at that some animated spider-man goodness cool we got that they got the last gun and four dollars of revenge which i believe we might have seen before at a previous sale some more western love two rare classic westerns oh, high definition phone transfers hmm ooh Oh, some very interesting one from the writer of Django. Huh. Nice. Again, not much of a Western guy, but when you see good Westerns or ones that you don't know and you're a lover of them, you gotta check them out, man. The very fairy princess. Okay. Scholastic. Okay, and some more for the kitties. That, that 
Oh, search party. From, from one of the guys that brought you old school and road trip. Oh, great. Wonderful. L leave no bro behind. Oh, God. <laughs> what the hell is this about? The Courage of Old School and Hangover Part 2 comes... The riotous road comedy search party when the love of his life... is him in the altar thanks to his heart party and pals. TJ Miller, Jesus follows her down to Mexico where he's carjacked and left naked in the middle of nowhere. Oh yeah, this definitely feels like like they they, they took shit from from hangover. God. It's a mess in the first place. Oh lord, dude. What is this? It, it's kind of one of those movies that definitely rips off a lot of other movies. Like, definitely rips off Road Trip. You can easily tell it rips off Hangover. I mean, it could be kind of cool, but... I've seen these movies before, and they've probably been done better. I mean, Hangover is one of the best. I mean, can this movie really outdo The Hangover? I kind of doubt it. And T.J. Miller, man. Dude, you barely see T.J. Miller anymore. You really don't, dude. I mean, after, like, the, the whole controversy, he's, he's kind of been canceled, hasn't he? I mean, you, you barely ever see him in, in shit now. And I don't think he's going to be in the next Deadpool movie either, so I guess he's got to make movies like Search Party. Okay. It might be fun and interesting. I mean, if you guys know, definitely give me a heads up on this one. I don't know. It kind of just looks okay to me, though. Then they have In Darkness, which I know we've definitely seen this one before at a previous sale. They've got The Berlin Syndrome. We've definitely seen this one before as well. And it's a Walmart Select title. <laughs> Great. Oh, all that Walmart goodness of the Dollar Tree. Gotta love it. They've got Live By Night, which I did pick up in a previous sale. I gotta admit, guys, great movie by Ben Affleck. Not as good as some of his other stuff, not as good as The Town or Argo, but still a really solid film that unfortunately really didn't get a lot of love when it came out, you know, years ago at the box office. I think people were kind of just not really feeling it, and people were more interested in talking to him about Batman than anything else, so... This one kind of flew under the radar. Not bad, though. Interesting. We're worth a look, I'd say. Then... Huh. Feed the gods. <laughs> Another Walmart select title. He's a legend. Your history. I, I like that cover. Very interesting. What is this about? In search of their long-lost parents, two brothers journey to a small mountain town that is home to a m mythical Bigfoot-like creature. Yes! Oh, Bigfoot, of course. I was kind of thinking it may have been Bigfoot, but I wasn't quite sure. Oh, yeah, now, definitely. Oh, yeah. This is Bigfoot, baby. Damn. Man, you know, I've seen some really good ones out there like abominable is really fantastic of oh, a bigfoot film obviously the legend of the boggy creek is pretty good and then i've seen some really bad ones like i recently saw this tom green bigfoot movie which is so fucking god awful man i mean it's movies like that that give bigfoot a bad name bro and this fuck i mean it could be kind of cool but then again i mean depending on how they do the bigfoot stuff I don't know. You know, there, there's a lot of really bad Bigfoot movies. Not many really great ones out there. Few and far between. When there is, though, you hold on to them because they're, they're damn precious. Could this be one of the good ones? Maybe. Not holding my breath, though. <laughs> that they have Astral, which I know we've definitely seen in a previous sale. Hey, Dougie. What? what the hell? At that, they've got... Oh, they've got a double feature of two movies, Ship of Fools and Lilith. With Warren Beatty. Really? Holy shit. Started. And Ship of Fools has Vivian Lee, Lee Marvin, Jose Ferrer. Oh, and, and Lilith also has Peter Fonda, Kim Hunter... Robert Riley, really? Show of Fools is set on a German ocean liner. Really? 
this is really fascinating to me, guys. No, I've never heard of either one of these titles. But some really good actors in both of these movies? Huh. No, this is really fascinating. A really great double feature, man. A lot of double features that I see out there in the wild. I've seen most of the movies. This is really intrigues me. This is like two titles that I've never heard of before. And I might be interested in really checking these out. They're both really intriguing. Hmm. I might have to give that one a look. Not bad. And they've also got... Ah, Edge of 17. Very nice. Dollar at the Dollar Tree. Nice. You're only young once. Is it over yet? <laughs> Great. Wow, Haley Steinfeld, Woody Harrelson, Kira Sedgwick, Haley Lou Richardson. Man, what a great, great, great coming of age movie, man. And, uh, and I'm serious, man. And I'm a fan of coming of age films. I love, like, the old school ones, of course, like The Breakfast Club and. And sixteen candles, a lot of that stuff. Of course, nowadays, sort of the the newer stuff is pretty good. Uh, the perks of being a wallflower is really amazing, and I gotta put the edge of seventeen in there as well. Really fantastic movie. The performances are really great here, and it really, you know, you really get to know the characters, you feel for them, and it's really a great sort of coming of age tale of really the modern day teenager. And what the modern day teenager really goes through and the difficulties and the struggles and the hilarity. So fantastic, man. Really amazing movie. If you've never checked this out and love coming of age or sort of teen drama movies, so good, man. So, so good. I can't believe they have that, man, for a dollar. That's awesome. Then they've got, oh, they have Fender Bender. Really? For a dollar from Scream Factory. Guys. I actually own Fender Bender. I own it on Blu-ray, and I really like this movie. This is actually a a um, a Shout Factory film. They helped actually produce this film and made it, and it's one of the the Shout Factory originals. And it's really, really great. It's about this guy who who basically finds these these people, you know through like obviously like accidents like like causing an accident and then getting their information and then stalking them and killing them it's actually really good i like i like the kills in here i like the killer i i like sort of this the survivor girl damsel in distress i thought it was a really solid new age horror flick i thought it was pretty good actually i really do enjoy this one man for a dollar if you've never watched this one i think give it a chance man really it's great that they have that man they also have the diary of a chambermaid really the very true confessions of an untrue girl <laughs> okay i love the cover man that's great yo love that cover what is this about? Legendary director Jennifer's film version of Octave novel Diary of a Chambermaid was adapted for the screen by Burgess Meredith. Really? Yo, this is an old school movie. I don't know. For some reason, I thought it was like a modern movie I'd never heard of, but no, this is an old school one. Oh, this kind of looks cool. Wow, man. Look at the stuff Dollar Tree is getting. And they're getting old school stuff, man. That kind of looks cool. That, that cover, though, is great. Yo. Then they got the power of few, which I know we've seen before. Another sale. Hmm. The Black Rider. Revelation Road. Ooh. Is that Dove Approved? Oh, my God. That's Dove Approved, man. Holy shit. Yo. Kevin Sorbo. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, of course, Kevin Sorbo's in this. The end is near. The rapture has come and gone. Oh, of course, it's Dove approved. Let's talk about the rapture. Its wigs is a famished wasteland filled with desperate scavengers and vicious bandits. Should make a man as a quiet drifter with a never. Really? Kevin Sorbo, man, with a special appearance by Bruce Marsh and Marciano. Oh, of course, man. It's a wasteland, and of course, people need to regain their faith, and yada, 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 yada. 
Oh my God. That's interesting. Jeez, I've never heard of this one, but uh, now that I've seen the synopsis, yeah, it makes total sense that it's Dove Approved. I like the cover, though. I mean, if you looked at the cover, I don't think you would ever really think it's Dove Approved, though. Jeez, it's kind of, kind of interesting, not going to lie. I don't know if I'd ever watch it, but it's kind of fascinating. You know, then they have Sergeant Will Gardner, which I know we've seen in a previous sale. They have them. Shock and Awe, which is a really, really great, great movie, man. A really, a really great movie of just about about war and profiting off of it and the secrets behind it. Such a really, really fan, fantastic movie, man. On Blu-ray for a dollar. That's a great one. Yeah, then... <laughs> Beyond White Space. I think we might have seen this in a previous film, but look at that cover, man. That is all kinds of cheesy sci-fi, dude. Look at that. Oh, my God. That, that, that looks cheesy as shit. Oh, Lord. When a deep space fishing vessel is robbed by a gang of pirates, the captain makes a daring decision to go after a rare and nearly extinct species. The hunt, his obsession propels him further into space and danger as the crew spins into a downward spiral of mutiny. And betrayal and cheesy sci-fi effects. <laughs> oh my god! I like the synopsis. The synopsis isn't bad, man. But I don't know. This thing, look, this thing looks cheesy as fuck, dude. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> oh, that cover, man. God. Oh lord. And then they got take this waltz, which is a pretty solid movie for a dollar, man. On Blu-ray, definitely seen that one before. Hillsong, let hope rise. Hmm. Probably about faith-based music, dare I say. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, not really my thing. I'm not going to lie. You know, honestly, the only sort of religious band that I ever listened to was P.O.D. They were sort of religious rock. And actually, I quite enjoyed them. I sort of liked their their music and... I thought it was really catchy, and I kind of like that stuff. But outside of that, I don't really listen to much re- re- religious stuff. I mean, I mean, come on, guys. I'm not really that much religious anyways. But there is some that is really, really good, to be honest with you. So I can see why people really connect with it. Because it really speaks to them. I get it. Not really my thing, though. But and then they got, oh, the great spy chase. Hmm. Interesting. I kind of like that cover. Oh, this is an old school one again. Another black and white one. An infamous arms dealer bequeaths his cancel and electric luck in of his patent to his beautiful young widow. Ooh. Serious services from several countries. Oh, wow. Spy vs. Spy. This hilarious action-packed comedy. Really? This kind of is very interesting. And it comes from Olive. Holy shit! The Dollar Tree is getting in Olive film titles now? Seriously? Yo! That kind of looks cool. I love old-school movies, man. Especially, like, old-school movies that I don't really know about. There's something that really intrigues me. Like, like, wow, I haven't checked this out. This is an unknown film. It intrigues me, actually. Dollar is getting into olive films, really. Wow, it's wild, man. Then they got, oh, Super Collider. It only takes seven seconds to destroy the world. Well, it only takes seven seconds to do a lot of things. I hate to say it, but <laughs> it is true. Oh, man. Millions dead, one hope. When the largest particle collider ever built suffers a catastrophic malfunction, it opens an alternate dimension that causes a disaster on a global scale of chaos that erupts around the world. Dr. Visker Suskine, one of the scientists working on the collider, is the only person who was able to stop the cataclysmic events that are killing millions across the planet and threatening the survival of humanity itself. Oh, this has got to be cheesy. <laughs> Come on, you you guys know it. This is, is going to be ridiculous, right? I mean, it's a ridiculous thing that, you know, I look at that synopsis and I'm like, and Michael Bay didn't direct this? <laughs> Like, I'm like, I'm like, my God, this is like right up my, Michael Bay's alley, man. I mean, Jesus, if he shot Bruce Willis in into space to take down, down an asteroid, why wouldn't he make this fucking movie? Lord, dude. I don't know. The effects are probably going to be cheesy as shit, though. 
Ah, oh, I just have a feeling on that one. I really do. Oh boy. <laughs> they had, they have, ah, Tremors a Cold Day in Hell. With Michael Gross and Jamie Kennedy. Ah, Tremors, goodness, man. I gotta admit, dude. I mean, I am a fan of Tremors. I like some of the Tremors movies. The first one, amazing. The second one, I really do enjoy that one. The third one, not so much. Fourth one's not terrible. I kind of like the fourth one. The other ones, I'm not a big fan of. I mean, I like Michael Gross as Burt Gummer. He is awesome. I mean, throughout all the films, he has maintained his badass status as Burt Gummer. God bless the guy, man. But some of the movies are not as great. I'm kind of not the biggest fan of Jamie Kennedy. He's okay, but not always my cup of tea. However, he's not bad in, in here, all things considered. The later Tremors movie is not as good, but still decent fun, I'd say. Decent. Then they got Saving Winston. Huh. Hmm. Troubled teen, a rescued horse, and God, what the fuck? Really? Oh, but Dove Approved. Oh, baby, of course, this is Dove Approved. Ah, Redemption Through Faith. Okay, and discovers the abandoned horse along with the journey to redemption. Yeah, okay, the friendship with the horse and redeeming them and finding finding your faith. Ah, yada, yada, yada. We've seen it before. <laughs> okay, you've got that. We've got, hmm, Eloise. Oh, and another Walmart Select. Ah, I love those Walmart Selects, baby. Eliza Dushku and Robert Patrick from the producer of Exorcism of Emily Rose. Ooh, what is this one about? Mind bending. Ooh, I like that. It's like almost like Asylum with like Robert Patrick being like the the creepy do doctor. Yo, that's kind of cool. Look at that. Eliza Dushku is like, oh my god. Somebody help me. And I thought and I thought the weird freaky cannibals in wrong turn were bad. I gotta deal with Robert Patrick with a scalpel? <laughs> Fuck my life. <laughs> oh my god, man. This looks kinda cool. I've never heard of Eloise. I love Robert Patrick in like evil roles for some reason. He's so good in him, man. He really is. Yo. This could be fun. Oh, that's, yeah, that's interesting. Then they've also got Beyond the Sky, which we definitely have seen before. Then, as I'm kind of looking within both of these boxes, guys, they look pretty much the same. Most of the same stuff in these boxes, actually. These two, at least. They've got Barbie. <laughs> definitely not for me. Got World Series 2019. Pocket listing. With Rob Lowe and Burt motherfucking Reynolds. That's <laughs> wow, okay. In Los Angeles, a hot property is a killer deal. Yes, indeed. Apparently so, man. With my man Burt. Damn. Rocking those glasses, baby. You do you, Burt. You do you, motherfucker. Oh, man. God, I think we might have seen this before in a previous hell. I think we might have. Who can you trust? Double crosses, adultery, murder, mistaken identity, and revenge ensue when a mysterious power player and his sultry wife hire a disgraced Los Angeles property broker to discreetly market and sell their Malibu villa. Wait a minute, why can't they just, like, go to a, to a regular, like, real estate person? Like, like, the, like, I mean, how hard is it to sell a Malibu villa, man? Fuck. Jesus, is it that tough? You got a murder, motherfucker? <laughs> Jeez. And I, and I thought apartment hunting was bad. Fuck. Damn. Jesus, man. It could be cool, dude. I mean, Rob Lowe and, and Reynolds in the same movie. Fuck, man. It's got to be so, somewhat worth it. Look at that, man. I mean, Rob Lowe with, like, with like long hair mullet shit and Burt Reynolds rock, rock, rocking pink glasses. Oh, my God. What is it? <laughs> oh, man. It could be cool, though. Hockless. That's interesting. Uh, then they've got ah uh, Marshall's miracle and oh that sweet sweet dove love baby yes Shannon Elizabeth and Lauren Holly we might have seen this before dude embark on the journey of a lifetime oh Lord 
Remember the miraculous true story, Marshall Miracle tells the tale, get it, of the courageous young fan and his journey to save a friend in need after becoming the newest target of school bullies. Oh, those damn bastards. Finn finds Marshall, a dog who also endures a life of hardship. As but to rescue his new friend, Finn takes off to save Marshall and prove once and for all the miracles do exist. Oh, very interesting. Good movie about boy and his dog. Not bad. We've seen that before. Shannon Elizabeth, though. Man. Damn. I miss the days when, you know, she was, like, getting spied on with, with a webcam and get, getting naked and shit. Or when she actually... True story, man. She made this movie called Jack Frost, right? Where she literally gets killed by the snowman. The killer snowman literally fucking her w- with a carrot. <laughs> I kid you not, man. It's true, true. I own it, and it's 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 great. It's so good, man. Why can't Shannon Elizabeth go back to those days? Damn it, Ugh. has to do Marshall's miracle. Get killed again by by a killer snowman. Damn it. Oh Lord, Jesus. They got that. They got Diablo with Scott Eastwood and Walton Goggins. Beyond hope, beyond regret. Beyond salvation. Oh, Scott Eastwood walking in his father's footsteps, dare I say. You don't forget the past. You bury it. A young civil war veteran named Jackson wakes up to find his beautiful wife kidnapped by ruthless bandits. When goes around every corner, the line being a blur. Mmm. Very interesting. You know, I've seen enough movies with Scott Eastwood that I kind of like him. He's got a good screen presence. He's got a certain amount of charisma. He's got a long way to go before he really proves himself as, as like, the the leading man guy, but I think he's pretty solid. And Walton Goggins, I mean, man, come on. Walton Goggins is amazing. Let's be real. He's awesome, dude. You put Walton Goggins in, like, a Western, that's, like, instantly watchable. And Scott Eastwood's pretty, pretty good, too. Yeah, well, my devil might be worth it. Blu-ray for a dollar? Probably is. Then they got Maximum Impact. Hmm, interesting. And I believe we might have seen this before at a previous sale, actually. Tom Arnold, William Baldwin, Danny Trejo. Yeah, as... Oh, man. American CIA. The... The Russian FSB. Okay. Prevent World War Three, save millions of lives. Okay. It probably is one of those sort of action thrillers that's kind of on the cheap. Just saying, man. I mean, good actors, though. I mean, I like Kelly Who. Tom Arnold. Well, I mean, Tom Arnold's a Tom Arnold. I mean, I liked him in True Lies, but then again, he wasn't really doing much action. He was just sort of sitting in a van and sort of, you know, spitting out jokes, but... But I, I, I kind of like him in that. I like him in Big Bully and a couple other things, man. William Baldwin. Nah, it's William Baldwin. And Danny Trejo, come on. I mean, Danny Trejo is one badass motherfucker. So it might it might be kind of cool just for him alone. But I have a feeling this one's on the cheap. Just a feeling on that one, guys. Then they got Sammy Turtle Reef. I believe we've seen this one before. Another one of those weird-ass fucking animated Dollar Tree things. And then... Oh my god. What the fuck? The happily ever after pack. You know, at first I was I was looking at this thing and I'm thinking, "Wait a minute. Shrek?" And then I'm like, "No, it's not Shrek. It's like a cheap knockoff. Like a cheap knockoff of Puss in Boots and Donkey and Brave like like the the, the Disney animated one. Like what the fuck? That is weird. Look at that. Like, it's, it's, it looks like Shrek stuff, right? I mean, the, the donkey looks eerily similar to, like, the Shrek movie, and Puss in Boots kind of does, but not quite. Like, slightly altered, looks a little more fucked up. <laughs> like, seriously. Holy shit. Like, this is, this is one of those ones that literally, like, kids are gonna pick it up, or, or adults, or they're gonna pick this up and be like, oh, Shrek, that, that's what I almost did. And buy it thinking that it's like some sort of spinoff of the Shrek stuff, but I don't think so. It's sort of just cashing in on on the whole phenomenon of it. But making something way cheaper. Well, that's wild. 
Yo, I, I think these movies are probably dog shit, but boy, boy, they're they're gonna fool somebody with those, man. Wow, that's crazy. Now then they got hmm, blue iguana, Sam Rockwell, Ben Schwartz. I kind of like that cover. Hmm, Sam Rockwell, Dollar Tree Love, mullets, bullets, and one gem of a heist. Small time crooks Eddie and Paul. Are in over their heads when a cute London lawyer has them to steal a rare jewel. Meanwhile, a mullet-haired gangster wants to jump for himself. Bullets and sparks flying is pond-hopping comedy caper. I may have heard of this one. I'm almost positive I might have, but I don't think I've ever seen it. I love Sam Rockwell, man. Sam Rockwell is amazing. Ben Schwartz, kind of like him. Comedy's okay. It's kind of interesting because I, I love actors like you know, Sam Rockwell and some of these other people that, that they do these high profile films, like these high profile Oscar nominated movies, you know, big Hollywood stuff. And then they do some smaller indie flicks. And I, I think they just like to work. They just like to work and do interesting projects. It doesn't matter whether it's high profile or not. And I kind of like that about Sam Rockwell, man. He's a very fascinating guy, dude. This looks very interesting. I like a good comedy caper movie. This might be interesting. Blue Iguana. Hmm. Bad. But then they've got Brave Town with Josh Duhamel, Maria Bello, Laura Dern, and Lucas Till. That's a nice cast. Life Hurts. Love Heals. Probably coming back from the war or something. After running with the law, Josh, a popular New York DJ, is sentenced to spend the last of his underage years with his French father. Okay. Team Captain Mary Children. Okay, it's not a war. I thought it was a war thing. Just just think, think thinking about that, but Huh. Must have ended interesting one. Not, nice actors in it though. Hmm. Not that they got Galveston, which I know we've seen a previous sale. Ah, some Packer love. And a Cinderella story. If the shoe fits. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Was it trying to be like Grease or step up? Or what the fuck? A magical music. Oh, they're they're definitely trying to be like Grease. Look at that man. Like they they're totally re- ripping off Grease Lightning and shit. A magical musical treat for the dreamer and all of us. Now now's her chance. Woman has a flair for motor repair. Of course she does. But her dream is to sit in the driver's seat of song and dance start him out. God, she's struck in neutral. However. Oh, man, this is trying to be a whole bunch of things, man. It's trying to be Grease, and it's trying to be, like, a fucking dance step-up movie, a musical at the same time. What the fuck? Oh, my God. It's trying to be a spinoff of, like, Cinderella and, you know, a different type of tale, mo- modern-day thing. Man, f- uh, fuck this movie. <laughs> fuck this movie, man. Try Trying to, like, do a modern-day Cinderella and ripping off better movies, man. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, the shit I see here, man. You get that? You got, ah, Scooby-Doo. Oh, my God. And WrestleMania, John Cena. I'm surprised I can see him. Oh, ho, ho. Scooby-Doo joins WWE in this. What is that, Vince McMahon? Kane? What the fuck? Oh, my God. John Cena, Triple H, The Miz, Kane. Oh, my God. They actually did a WrestleMania fucking Scooby-Doo movie mashup. Seriously. Oh, my fucking God, man. Man, anything for for, for a dollar, man. The WWE, man. God. I mean, I love Scooby-Doo, okay? I'm not going to lie. Scooby's great. Damn. (laughs) It might be fun, all things considered, dude, but... Man, Scooby Doo mashes up with everybody. I mean, he's mashed up with with Batman and a whole bunch of others. Why not John Cena and wrestling? I, I, why, why not? Right? Makes sense. Uh, then they've got, huh? R.L. Stein's mostly ghostly, huh? Interesting. From the creator of Goosebumps. Hmm. Ooh. Max is hardly a typical 11-year-old. He loves magic, detests sports, and he can't seem to say a single word to his crush, Tracy, the most popular girl in school. And the one who can see the ghost deal of a lifetime. Huh. Uh, of course, he has to solve the mystery, get the girl, yada, yada, yada. Of course he does. You know, I got to admit, man, 
I love those old school R.L. Stein books. I love them as a kid, man. Some of that stuff was some of the best, man. I mean, when you're a young kid and you read those R.L. Steins, it's just your imagination is going, you know, 10,000 miles an hour, man. It really is. It's just, it's just everything that goes on in your head and, and visualizing it. So cool, man. And the, that old, like, like Goosebumps TV show, which I used to love, man. And, and even the Goosebumps movies... Not bad films overall. I mean, the second one I think is better than the first one, but I do enjoy them. This one looks a little bit more on the cheapo range, but it's kind of cool to see R.L. Stein getting some love. Got to admit, man, it is pretty cool. Then they got ooh, Tom, Thomas the Tank. Oh God, I haven't seen this Tom, Thomas stuff in years. Boy, interesting. Uh, then. Ah, Justice League, The New Frontier. I know we've seen this before in a previous sale. Double Shot of Superhero Goodness. Radio Flash. I believe we may have seen this in a previous sale as well. Dominic Monaghan, man. Yeah. Who survives after the blackout? Yeah, isn't this one about... Yeah, causes... Find themselves plugged into an all-too-real fight for survival. Yeah, about about a track and and encountering strangers and survival yeah i believe i believe we did see this in a previous sale man it looks interesting actually it does i love dominic monaghan i mean the lord of the rings stuff and then lost he's he's good dude interesting sort of sci-fi post-apocalyptic stuff hmm that actually might be cool i love the cover dude that's not bad for a dollar that's pretty cool that more thomas and friends great Girls, oh my God, Stephen, stop! <laughs> oh my God, I got a lot of Thomas and Friends love here. Oh, well, along with Thomas and Friends, they also have Bad Teacher, the unrated edition Blu-ray. Nice. This is an okay movie. It's got some really good parts in it. There is some funny mo- moments in here. It's not my favorite Cameron Diaz movie, but. There is some enjoyment in here, and I gotta admit, man, I miss Cameron Diaz. Am I the only one? I mean, I know she's retired from acting, and she's sort of doing her own thing, and, and you know, enjoying married life away from hot Hollywood, and I actually wish her only the best. I mean, I truly do. I wish her only the best. I just really miss Cameron Diaz, because I, re- I just loved her... You know, there's something about Mary and The Mask and just so many really great movies that she she did and was a part of. And I guess I would rather miss an actress or an actor rather than see them come back and be lesser than what they were before. You know what I mean? There's something about missing them and remembering the good times rather than seeing them, like, come back and, like, fall flat on their face. You know what I'm saying? Cameron Diaz had some pretty funny stuff, man. Bad teachers, not bad, honestly. Blu-ray for a dollar is pretty good, though. Then, an eternal love. Ten inspirational movies. Hmm. Interesting for all you inspirational movie lovers out there. They got that. They got, oh, gee, they got the Blu-ray of Emoji movie. Oh, my God. I never saw this, by the way, but I heard it is fucking god awful man i heard this thing is terrible it's, this is a fucking train wreck man i heard bad things about this movie and honestly i can kind of see it i mean you made a an emoji movie why i mean emojis are okay but do they really need the fucking movie i mean they're so popular that somebody in hollywood some fucking executive that makes way more money than i'll ever make in my life decides you know what you know what we should make yeah, we should make an emoji movie Totally, and you know, like millions of dollars to make a piece of shit film. Oh man, some people seriously need to be punched in the face. <laughs> I'm telling you. Oh lord. Yeah, they've got hmm, Bel Canto, based on the New York Times bestseller. Julian Moore, Ken Watanabe. Kind of feel like we've seen this before. A famous opera singer is held hostage in South America by a guerrilla rebel group after performing at a Japanese businessman's lavish birthday party. Man, maybe we haven't, actually. Unexpected bonds are forged in the standoff that ensues. That's really interesting, honestly. So it's sort of a hostage situation, but the fact that these bonds are built because of a hostage situation, 
it must be a very powerful movie. I mean, Ken Watanabe's a great actor, and so is Julianne Moore. I mean, I, I love her in a lot of movies, man. I mean, especially what she did in Hannibal, playing Clarice. I thought she did an amazing job in that movie, man. And she's actually a really solid actress. Huh. Man. Interesting. Very fascinating. That might be good. Good one, honestly. For a dollar, not bad. Not that. They've got... Really? <laughs> They've got dirt. Oh, my God. Kevin Dillon and Christina Moore, of course. The the adrenaline rush of dirt bike racing. Yeah. <laughs> like dirt bike or dirt cars or whatever the fuck it is. Neither for 17-year-old... What is it called? Boosting cars. Oh, oh, it's all oh, man. So it's kind of like, kind of like maybe Fast and Furious, or some of those fucking movies. You know, it's about a teenager, and of course he gets his his life t- together and learns how to race and all that bullshit. I like Kevin Dillon to a certain degree. I mean, the old school stuff like him and like the Blob is is really cool, man. But I never got into some of the other stuff he's he's done. I mean. Yeah, I've seen good movies that are like racing movies, like Driven with Stallone is a really good, good one, and and Rush is a really great film as well. But I'm like, no, oh, Dirt with Kevin Dillon can it really be that good? I don't know. Now that one, he got Clinton's an American Odyssey, really. For a dollar, the Dollar Tree, okay. He got that one. And then they have Historic Mission. Hmm. HD Net Blu-ray Love. I feel like space launches. Oh, why not? On to the next batch of physical media dollar goodness, baby. Let's dive right back in with Trucker. Michelle Monaghan, Nathan Fillion, and Benjamin Brad. No, I've never heard of this one, man. One of those interesting unknown indie films, perhaps. Diane Ford, a vivacious and successful independent truck driver, leads a carefree life of long-haul truck and one-night stands and all-night drinking. But really, Michelle Monaghan and Nathan Fillion. Uh, wow, what a combo. Until the evening, her strange 11-year-old son is unexpectedly dropped at her door. Peter hasn't seen his mother since he was a baby and with Diane as little as she wants him, but they really it was this sort of mother son bonding film in in a lot of ways. Fascinating. I've never heard of this one, man. This is really interesting. I love the sort of unknown indie gems that I come across here at the Dollar Tree, man. I mean I, I really do. I mean I love Nathan Fillion. He's awesome. Michelle Monaghan's a pretty good actor. Benjamin Bratz, not bad either. Not bad. Interesting indie goodness. Trucker. This is probably good. For a dollar to the Dollar Tree. Not bad, man. Then they got... Oh, wonderful. The Lord is risen. F- fantastic. I'll, I'll uh, alert the world. Okay. Hey, God. Uh, more World Series love. Ip Man Season 1. I have seen this at the Dollar Tree before, but I think I saw the DVD. have not seen the Blu-ray, though. I did buy it. Haven't gotten a chance to watch it yet, but I am di- dying to, man. I am a... I've become a big Ip Man fan. I mean, the Donnie Yen stuff is awesome. There was a new Ip Man movie that came out not too long ago. Complete dog shit, but Ip Man's a great ca- character. Honestly, really, really cool. I'm dying to see how this this, this one is. Definitely. You got Doing Time on Maple Drive. Lori Laughlin. Jim Carrey. What? What the hell? I have never heard of this one, guys. I'm dead serious. Every family has its secrets. Wow, look how young Lori Laughlin is. How look, look how young Jim Carrey is. Whoa. Holy shit. Superstar Jim Carrey, he had already done me, myself, and Irene at this point, turns in an unforgettable dramatic performance in this powerful family drama film. Whoa. Seriously? 
this is kind of an interesting film because you know what I find sometimes? And it's kind of interesting because some of these actors, right, they do these small indie films, right, or movies that are, you know, not very high profile. And years later when they become big and they're big actors and everything, that's when some of these movies finally come out. And that's when they finally see the light of day. And this might be one of them. This really might because, like, Lori Laughlin is really young in this movie, man. I mean, this is this has got to be a very old school and way before he became f famous. Especially her as well. Wow, this is definitely one of those unknown gems, man. Wild. Never thought I'd see something like this at the Dollar Tree. This is interesting. If you guys know much about this, let me know. Family secret drama movie with Jim Carrey. And the things that you find at the Dollar Tree. Damn. That's fascinating, man. I'm not going to lie. Then they've got Beauty and the Beast, High Voltage, uh, Abduction. Help. I shrunk my teacher. Well, at least you don't have to do your math homework anymore. I mean, there is a plus. <laughs> that. Oh, Jesus Christ. No more. <laughs> oh, man, s stay in the phone, you bastard. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, Dark was the Night, World Series, Dage, a bunch. Dark House with two bonus movies, Grave Secrets. So we might have seen this one before. Conquer Your Fear. Yeah, I believe we have. Grave Secrets and Empty Rooms. You might have, huh? It looked kind of cool at the time, though. Kind of cre creepy. Look at that image. Oh, that's that's cool. It might buy might be interesting. And then they have uh, the nine World Series Humanity Bureau. Kenny, he's number one with you number two. <laughs> oh, what the hell? This is the funniest one I've seen this year by Michael Moore. What? The big splash. From Down Under. Ooh. Extra crap. <laughs> what? From the biggest festival to the smallest church social, Kenny has delivers porta potties to them all. A true unsung hero. Kenny is a knight in shining overalls, doing one of society's dirtiest jobs. Follow Kenny as he tackles every septic challenge that comes his way, culminating in a pilgrimage to that mecca of waste management, the international... Pumper and Cleaner Expo in Nashville, Tennessee, or as Kenny affectionately calls it, Poo HQ. What the hell? Hailed by critics as the citizen cane of romantic comedies about sewage and much more enjoyable than Borat and equally as funny. Part philosopher, part comedian, and all hard, Kenny's living proof that in sewage, like life, the best will always rise to the top. Oh my god, what the fuck is this? Holy shit, man. I have never heard of this thing. But I'm instantly intrigued, man. I'm not gonna lie, dude. Like, this guy is basically cleaning your shit and enjoying every single second of it. And he goes to, uh, uh, again, I want to stress this, the International Pumper and Cleaner Expo. Is this a real thing? Is that... Is this real? Really? What the hell? Like, oh my god, I've never heard of this thing. They say it's as funny as Borat. Now, I like Borat. I do, man. This is a wild movie, man. I don't know heads or tails what to make of this thing, but this thing has to be watched. It just has to be. Holy shit. What a wild synopsis, man. Jeez. Now I feel bad about taking my shits. Kenny has to clean them up. Kenny, I'm sorry, bro. I should probably lay off the Taco Bell. Yeah, I probably should. <laughs> sorry, Kenny. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Lord. What the fuck is that? That's wild. Holy shit. Uh, distortion. Oh, Sonic the Hedgehog. Super Sonic, man. Old school animated Sonic the Hedgehog. Nice. God, man, that's cool. They got Taboo. Ooh, the Blu-ray DVD combo pack. Look at this. That's a nice Blu-ray case. Shit. 
Huh. I've heard, I think I've heard of Taboo. I'm almost positive I have. Said in 1814, Taboo followed James Delaney, a man who has been to the ends of the earth and comes back irrevocably changed. Believed to be long dead, he returns home to London from Africa to inherit what is left of his father's shipping empire. Encircled in a conspiracy, murder, and betrayal. Ooh, really? I've heard of it, but I never really knew the synopsis or anything. This is really fascinating. And do for a dollar? That's pretty fucking cool, man. Holy shit. That's not bad, man. For a dollar, that's... I mean, you just if you want, just wanted the case alone, I mean, shit. For a dollar, well, can you really beat it? Oh, fuck. That's nice. Damn. Not that. Anthem. Warning shot, which we've seen before. Extortion. Little Miss Do Little. Yeah, I'll stick with Eddie Murphy. And that. More Taboo Love. Ah, and my man Dolph. We've seen this collection before, but I gotta reiterate, man. I love my man Dolph. He's cool. He's the tits. I mean, yeah, he doesn't do the best movies, but I kind of like him. And I think he's kind of a cheesy action guy. I mean, come on, he was the Punisher for fuck's sake. I mean, you gotta love a guy who, who who's the Punisher. And by the way, the best Punisher. I know you guys may disagree, but I know I'm right, damn it. Little Miss Doolittle, yet again. Ambition. It can kill you. Ooh, from the producer of A Nightmare on Elm Street. I think I may have heard of this. I know the cover definitely looks familiar to me, man. From Robert Shea, the producer of A Nightmare on Elm Street, comes a deviously engrossing thriller that will keep you guessing and squirming until the final frame. Judy is an intense, driven musician preparing for the biggest performance of her life, but her competition world can end up literally killing her. It has a frightening pattern. Ooh. Inspired by thrillers such as Carrie and Black Swan. Ooh, I love both of those movies, man. If that's in the same vein as those movies, consider me on board, man. Ah, and Scream Factory love as well. Hmm, not half bad. Huh, that might be interesting. I may have to check that one out. That, they have Silencer, which I know we have definitely seen before. But, I mean, come on. Chuck Liddell and Danny Trail in the same movie? Man, Danny Trail would kick Chuck Liddell's ass. <laughs> Just saying, man. And then they got The Beauty and the Beast. Jeez, another different Beauty and the Beast movie. But this is definitely an animated one. And look at that. Definitely below quality of Disney, let me tell you. You got Aladdin, Little Mermaid. I mean, they got this is literally all of the Disney stuff. But it's kind of weird. It's Disney, but it's not... It's not Disney animation. They they sort of take the titles and the story and do it in very subpar animation. Great. Yeah, sure. Why not for a dollar see subpar animated classic when you could just watch the Disney stuff, which is so much better. Just saying. Then they've got The Domestics. Ooh, Kate Bosworth. Good people didn't survive. They did. I like that cover. Nice. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Some sort of like a post-apocalyptic movie? Whoa, what the fuck is that? Look at that badass fucker. It's Mad Max meets The Purge. Man, what, what a great combo that is. In a terrifying post-apocalyptic world inhabited by murderous gangs divided into deadly factions, Nina and Mark race desperately across the lawless countryside in search of safety as one depraved group narrows their search for the couple... We must work together as they are put to the breaking point in order to survive. Yeah, I definitely thought it was post-apocalyptic. Hmm. Very interesting. Man, look at that big-ass fucker coming after him with the axe. Holy shit. Dude, this could be cool. Like a survival post-apocalyptic film. I mean, uh, Mad Max meets the Purge, that's not a bad combo. I'm just saying. I like Kate Bosworth. I'm not in love with Kate Bosworth, but I like her enough. She's done some interesting flicks, man. But this could be cool. I like the cover, though. That's not bad. Uh, then they got... Help, I shrunk my parents. Oh, wow. They have Vicky Cristina Barcelona. A Woody Allen film, man. Shit. Here at the Dollar Tree. Nice. This is actually a really good Woody Allen film. Truly, man. And I am a decent Woody Allen fan. 
by far, man. I mean, I'm not the biggest Woody Allen fan, but I like a lot of his films, man. But this is a great one, and what a cast, man. Javier Bardem, Bridget Clarkson, Chris Messina, Scarlett Johansson, Rebecca Hall, Penelope Cruz, and what a great one, man. And I just love that it's sort of this romantic romantic sort of triangle that's going on and, and, and these different stories. And it's it's such a really amazing film, man. I mean, I can't say all Woody Allen films are really good. Like, Woody Allen, especially back in the day, Woody Allen would literally make, like, a shit ton of movies within, like, like two or three years. He would make, like, four or five films. I mean, that guy was churning out shit like crazy. And some of it was good, and a lot of it was kind of, like, iffy. But he was on a really good run at at a certain point, man. I mean, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, I think um, Match Point is a really good one as as well, and a couple other ones. He was on a good run for a, a while. Uh, a Midnight in Paris, I think, is another one that he did. You know, he doesn't really do much anymore, but, you know, if you're looking into Woody Allen, there's some really good ones to check out. Like Manhattan, I think, is a solid one. Bullets Over Broadway you know, of, of course, like Annie Hall, that's, of course, a classic one, but Vicky Christina Barcelona is really good, man, really fantastic one, I'm surprised to see he's at the dollar tree, man, for a dollar, that's great, uh, then, Orphan Horse, which we've seen before, The Angry Beavers, I have never seen any of the Angry Beavers, but I know of them. Like, like I, I've seen, like, certain things on YouTube about the Angry Be- Beavers and everything, but I've never seen it. I heard that it's actually kind of fun. A really good one for kids, and I, I know, like, some adults, like, really have fun with it. So, I don't know. It could be could be good. Nickelodeon, man. I used to watch a shitload of Nickelodeon back in the day, man. But, you know, once I got older and you know, slightly more mature, <laughs> yeah, right, I, you know, I, I kind of got out of Nan- Nan Nickelodeon, but Angry Beavers, I heard good things, man, not bad, got that, they got Gothic Harvest, ooh, Lynn Shay, Sophia Mathen, and Bill Mosley, a voodoo curse, won't let them live or die, oh, baby, 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 oh, Lord, what is this, well, that's interesting, when the sun goes down, the party heats up. With Mardi Gras in full swing, a group of co eds drink the night away, completely unaware of the evil hunting in their midst. After one of them is lured away by a charming local, her friends raise to find her before she falls victim to a sadistic southern family played by a centuries old voodoo curse. I'm not gonna lie. I look at this cover and then I look at the synopsis and I couldn't, I was never thinking that this was gonna be the synopsis that, that I got. I'm serious, man. Like, I kind of like that. They're in Mardi Gras, they're co eds like, yeah, you know, like, you know, they're, they're, they're lifting up their top, they're getting bees, you know, you know, whatever. And, and, you know, anything and everything can happen at Mardi Gras, especially when it comes to old voodoo curses. Sure, man. God, I lo- I like Lynn Shay and I love Bill Mosley, man. Boy, I didn't know that they were both in a movie together. That's wild. Yo, that's kind of cool, man. It might be dog dog shit though, to be fair. But I could, I could check it out. It could be interesting. I mean, come on, you never know. Gothic Mardi Gras horror, wild man. This is wild shit. And then they got ah, the reef. Another weird Dollar Tree animated movie. Then they also got ooh, Ip Man Origins. Very nice. The Man Becomes the Master. This is one I have never heard of, actually. Another Ip Man movie that I haven't seen. Definitely will have to check this one out. The Master Who Became Legend. God, I I know. I'm I'm like keeping a lot of praise on Ip Man, but it really is true, man. I love Ip Man. Donnie Yen, dude. Those four movies are fantastic. And ever since then, I've always kind of wanted to dive into more Ip Man love. And so anything I, I find that I don't know of, I kind of want to just gobble it up, dude, because Ip Man is so cool. I mean, I'm not saying everything is going to be great. There is some Ip Man that's truly dog shit. But you don't know until you find out. Just saying. But then they got Frenzy, which I know we've seen in a previous sale as well. Ooh, yes. Shark, shark infested horror. God. You got to love it, man. Jeez. They, they make a shitload of them. And then they got the white king with jonathan price fiona shaw huh 
a mix of 1984, The Hunger Games, and The Goonies, really. Boy, that's an interesting combo. Based on a world best bestselling novel, Jada is a carefree 12-year-old growing up in a brutal dictatorship, shut off from the outside world when the government imprisons his father and his mother are labeled traitors. Really? Well, that's, yeah, I guess it kind of is kind of like The Hunger Games and, like, The Goonies together. It's wild. I've never heard of this one, but it kind of looks actually really cool. Like this dictatorship and this boy going against the dictatorship. Yeah, that's definitely like the Hunger Games or or, or even some other like sci-fi stuff, like teen, like like young adult stuff. Huh. That looks really fascinating, actually. I've never heard of that one. That well, looks interesting. And abduction. Blitz, which we've definitely seen in a previous sale. Jason Statham, love. The Wild Thornberries. Oh, my God. My girlfriend loves this show. I am not here. She loves this, man. The Wild Thornberries. Holy shit. Again, this is another one that I didn't watch. Like, you know, when I was watching Nickelodeon back in the day, you know, it was, it was, um, like Rugrats and some of that other stuff. Man, the, the Wild Thornberries kind of passed me by. But I've heard people love this show, man. Wow. Season one at the Dollar Tree. That's great. That's some crazy stuff we're finding. Another one. Z Zhang, Legend of the Black Scorpion. Look at that. Star of Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, and Hero. Ooh. Two Disc Ultimate Edition. Whoa. Oh, man. That's got to be cool. Look at that. Jeez, what a great special edition at the Dollar Tree, man. I've never seen this one, but I love Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, man. Big, big fan of that movie, dude. And if this is even close to this, then I would have to give this one a chance. Probably some really great martial arts, man. Especially if it's choreographed by by Yen Wo Ping, who did The Matrix and the Kill Bill films. I mean, that guy knows how to choreograph a good fight sequence, man. Just saying. That's pretty cool, dude. Uh, then... Ah, now this is one I definitely watched back in the day in Nickelodeon. Real Monsters. Oh, my God. I watched this. This, along with, with Rugrats, was my jam, dude. I love Real Monsters. This was so cool, man. I mean, back in the day, you know, watching, like, monster stuff for kids was cool, right? I mean, you had, like, Little Monsters and, like, this show. And it was, like, it was cool, like, stuff, man. I love the designs of the monsters here. I love the comedy. I mean, this is so great, dude. Holy shit, I can't believe they have this. Oh, wild. Oh, this is so classic, man. I love I love this show. Man, I haven't seen the show in years, but I remember loving it. Man, I ate that shit up, man, with a kid. Holy shit, that's really cool, dude. Damn. I can't believe they have that. The Comet Kids. Gangsterland. I got Sean Ferris, Milo Gibson, Sean, Jason Patrick, Peter Fascinelli. When the city roared, Pwn was king. I think I've heard of this one. I'm almost positive I have. The war for Chicago has begun. During the height of 1920s prohibition, notorious gangster Al Capone recruits amateur boxer Machine Gun Jack McCorn to... Huh... Yeah, I have heard of this one, but I've never actually seen it. It kind of looks cool, I'm not going to lie, man. A good, like, gangster epic in the tradition of The Untouchables. I love The Untouchables. The Untouchables are amazing. So if this even comes close to that, this might be a good film. And a Blu-ray for a dollar? That's not bad, man. Pretty, pretty decent, dare I say. That, Tall Tales... The Steam Engines of Oz. Ron Perlman, William Shatner, and Julian Hoff. Their adventure will take them to a magical place. Oh my god, really? Steampunk twist on the classic Oz mythology. Really? Oh, that's interesting. God, I have seen a lot of different movies about the Wizard of Oz. I mean, obviously, that old school classic Wizard of Oz, which is amazing. I've seen Return to Oz, which is a really great movie, but it is a wild film. Like, it is a very dark take on the Wizard of Oz, man, but I really love that film. I saw Oz the Great and Powerful, which was an okay one with Franco. Not 
awesome, but okay. I, I know a lot of people really like Wicked, which I've never actually seen the stage show ever, but I've heard that's really fantastic. I know, I think they're making a movie out of that. I'm almost positive. And then the steam engines of Oz here. Really interesting steampunk version of Oz. That might be fascinating. I used to live in a town where they had an, the Oz Festival. And what it was, was basically, they basically, every single year, they did a a tribute to the creator of the Wizard of Oz world. And, and different um, actors and people who have done books about Oz and everything would come, and there would be a big parade and everything. And it was actually kind of cool going to that for like about three or four years. And the different people that you would see, and people would dress up in all different costumes. Like, like there is a lot of love for Wizard of Oz. I mean, truly, it is one of those long-lasting things that still is around to this day, and very deservedly so, man. I mean, it's kind of interesting how they reinvent Oz from time to time. Interesting steampunk idea on Oz. That could be cool. Just saying. That could be very interesting, man. Hmm. That they have... Ah, Betty Boop, man. Be- Betty Boop, honestly, is one of my mother's favorite cartoons of all time. I swear to God, man. Wow. Betty Boop. God. I've, I've watched a few of those. Classic. They also have Awake with Jonathan Reese Myers and William Forsythe. Interesting. Some nightmares happen after you're awake. Interesting. On a quest evening, a shabby baby sedan speeds down a country highway and gravel. I just went into a private room for questioning. A web of deceit and lies and a fight for survival. Oh, fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is this is one of your, like, mundane, like, uh, you know, survival flags. But, I mean, some good actors in there. It could be cool. Awake. All right. They got Dark House, the DVD of Abduction with the Slip, and The Legend of Halloween. Who, <laughs> of course, Halloween meets Hawaiian love. How can it get any better? Some girls? What is this? DVD and CD set includes classic tracks. Oh, the Rolling Stones, Some Girls. I totally missed that. Well, what a great cover, man. Whoa. So this is like a DVD and CD set of... of oh, it's, it's live in Texas. Oh, shit. What a great DVD set, man. Live in Texas, 78. Holy shit. Oh, and what a slip cover. Look at that. Nice slip for the Rolling Stones, dude. That is cool. Oh, dude, that's pretty awesome, man. Some girls. Rolling Stones love. That's nice, man. If you're a fan of Rolling Stones, that's a great item to get. Holy shit. That's really cool. They've also got Operative with Anthony LaPaglia. Oh, ho, ho. a brilliant young spy. A deadly mission. Very nice. Near perfect psychological thriller. After undergoing intense training, a brilliant rookie operative makes a tragic error that costs the lives of his entire team. It's finally two instincts. Which is assassins taking a stunning turn. Ah, yes. Assassins and agents and the complications and the action. Yes. Oh my god, man. This is probably a cool one, man. God, I haven't seen Anthony LaPaglia in something in a really long time, man. He's good, dude. I used to like him, man. I really like him in um uh I that that Mike Myers movie uh I'm dating an axe murderer. That that one. He's great in that film, dude. I think he's hilarious in that flick. God, I haven't seen him in a long time. Oh, dude, it would be great to see him in in, in another film, dude. God, this probably looks kind of cool, man. Interesting sort of assassin spy spy thriller action. Probably pretty damn cool. Not bad. At that, they got... Oh, before they were Bond. I believe we might have seen this at the Dollar Tree before. Daniel Craig, Timothy Dalton, or Roger Moore. What are some of the ones they were in before? Uh, the Slave of the Cannibal God, which, which I own. Great flick. Silverhawk, The Satanic Rites of Dracula. Oh, so it's basically different Bond actors in various films that were in uh, other movies and it's just kind of like this collection of other films. Some of these are really good, like Nightmare in Badham County, really great. Satanic Rites of Dracula, of course, pr- pretty good. Slave of the Cannibal God. Some of these I haven't heard of, like Legend of Sea Wolf. 
Love and Rage, Silver Hawk. There's a few of them I haven't, but some of these are really good, man. Very interesting collection. In interesting. Hmm. Not not bad. Got that. Oh, a triple feature of dog movies. Dog Gone, Angel Dog, and Karate Dog. For all your dog needs. Fantastic. Wonderful. Karate Dog. Oh, God. Really? Seriously? Where was God? Oh, another Dove approved one. Stories of Hope after the storm. Yeah, so of course the storm happens and you know, finding faith again and learn and learning to understand about God again and very interesting. The magnitude of destination measured over eight times greater. Huh. Interesting. Probably a good one. All things could consider. I can't say I love everything like faith based, but this probably is a good one. Uh, then they got the Lone Ranger Legends featuring the Lone Ranger, the Cisco Kid, 26 Men, 40 action packed episodes on four DVDs. Wow, all that Lone Ranger, Cisco Kid goodness! Holy shit, God, th see, this was really before my time in a lot of ways. I mean. Not to say that it's bad. It's probably really solid. And if you love these, these old school shows, and this is probably a great, great collection, man. Like I said, I'm, I'm a Western fan within certain movies, but not really a fan of Western shows exactly. Nah, not really a fan of them, though. Hmm. Uh, there they got... Hmm. The Zombie Planet Trilogy. Or Five of the Zombie Madness. Really? What the hell is this? Zombie Planet, Zombie Planet 2, Adam's Revenge, Zombie Planet 3, Kane Chronicles. I've never heard of the Zombie Planet, and now I can see why. <laughs> it looks cheap. Holy shit, look at that. That looks so cheap. Oh my god, what the fuck? Zombie Planet is the first film, CP International, originally released in 2004. I shouldn't pick up. In Adam's Revenge, the King Chronicle, epic together for the first time with nonstop action, adventure, and zombies who attempted to cash in on the low carb protein diet fad. They developed an enzyme that eventually became the oral medication, also known as Carb Crave Killer. Oh, so it literally turned them into zombies. Okay. The craving of protein was so strong that eventually use of the drug began to crave human flesh. Huh. It's an interesting idea. But man, this looks all kinds of cheap. <laughs> this looks, holy shit. The dead shall inherit the earth. Oh, man. You know, I love zombies. Dude, I love zombies so much, man. The Romero trilogy and a lot of other great stuff out, out there. Oh my god, like, m m movies like Fido are really cool, and of course so many others, ones that have come out in recent years, but, you know, like Train to Busan, but, I mean, I'm a, I'm a zombie fan to a certain extent, I mean, I like a lot of zombie movies, but I've seen a lot of shit, okay, like, Flight of the Living Dead is kind of garbage, and there's a few other things, but, you know, certain times, like, like, some cheapo zombie flicks work, like, there's this really cool one with Bill Mosley called Dead Air, which I kind of like. It's not bad. A little cheap, but I enjoyed that one. Something like this almost feels like amateurish shit. Well, I mean, I can see why it's at the Dollar Tree, but I don't know. This one looks kind of weird to me, guys. I'm not sure about, about this one. Just saying. It's kind of odd. Uh, then they've got Winnie, which I know we've seen before. Encounter. Your screams won't be heard. Huh, what is this? They will never let you leave. His new wife moved to the country to begin work on filming his thesis project about the study of atmospheric phenomena commonly known as orbs. Navigate the rally of these orbs. Ted soon realized that he and Lauren are being stalked by a mysterious unseen force. This has driven their landlord Jim out of his mind. I mean, he might have went out of his mind because he was con continually asking about the rent, but I'm ju just saying. I mean, <laughs> as Lauren becomes increasingly affected by the evil surrounding them. Really? So it's almost like this paranormal sci-fi movie uh, mixed with a horror flick? 
to a certain extent, I mean, it, it's an interesting idea with the orb and they're being stuck with this unseen force. It's interesting. I like the cover. I don't know, though. It's kind of fascinating. Hmm, that's interesting. That's an interesting one. Then they got the best of yoga no thank you <laughs> they have brotherhood of justice includes seven bonus movies as well i believe we might have seen this before in a previous sale the wild ride ministry of vengeance forever mine conventions of a police captain a dangerous place demolition high street corner justice interesting oh brian cranston is in street corner justice Corey Haim is in Demolition High. Franco Nero's in Confessions of a Police Captain. Ray Liotta, Joseph Fiennes, Gretchen Maul, for her mine. Jack Nicholson in The Wild Ride. Wow, what a great set. Shit, maybe we didn't see this one before. That's interesting. And Brotherhood of Justice is actually really good with with Kiefer and Keanu. Wow. That's a nice that's a nice set of movies. I'm not gonna lie, man. Those are probably some really cool gems in there. And the actors in them are really cool. Ah, for a dollar, that's pretty cool, man. Not gonna lie. Uh, then they got some interesting anime, Yu-Gi-Oh! Hmm. Then they got Oh jeez, they even have a dove collection now. Well, excuse me. Uh, the Ranger, the Cook, and a Hole in the Sky, Harvest, The Proud Rebel, and Rook, huh? They actually have a Dove collection set. I thought I'd never see the day. <laughs> oh, oh my God! More Dove love? How can my heart stand it? Let me tell you. Now that they also have. Holy shit! They have the Harry Potter DVD game. Oh my God! This is old school. Holy shit! For a dollar, man, I, I know some people who are quite passionate about Harry Potter, man, and the DVD game, man, they'd eat that shit up, holy shit. For a dollar, why not, man? Oh, they've got 20 action movies featuring Chuck N Norris. Wow, look at this, man. The President's Man, the President's Man Line in the Sand, Once a Thief, Once a Thief Family Business, Once a Thief Brother Against Brother, jeez, how many Once a Thieves were there? L.A. Street Fighters, Driven to Kill, Fist of Fear, Touch of Death, Bruce Lee Fights Back from the Grave. Oh, that sounds cool. Blind Fist of Bruce, The Image of Bruce Lee, The Contract, They Raid by Night, Fact Brigade, Waterfront, A Yank in Libya, Cold War Killers, Casablanca Express, and Honor with Roddy Piper. Whoa, what craziness of action movies. Some of these have... Some of these have Chuck North in them. Others, like, there's one that has Steven Seagal, Glenn Ford. Fuck, there's the, there's even one that has Richard Pryor in it, for fuck's sake. Jesus. Holy shit. Some of these are definitely unknown. I mean, it's Echo Bridge, but they, they put out a lot of these sort of collection sets, but fuck. This is fascinating. Yo. That's some really interesting shit. I'm not going to lie, man. I mean, probably some of them are dog crap, but some of them have got to be gems. I mean, 20 movies for a dollar, that's not a bad deal. Just saying. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, that's, that's wild. Then they've got... Ah, tribute to Paul McCartney. Paul McCartney's awesome. That's probably an interesting one. Ah, the Blu-ray DVD of 22 Jump Street for a dollar. That's a damn good deal. Great fucking movie, by the way. Uh, 15 movies... Most requested westerns <laughs> again from Echo Bridge. Yuma. Ryan Gosling. Holy shit. Nothing too good for a cowboy. Burt Lancaster. Ron White. Slim Pickens. <laughs> Holy shit. Richard Boone. John Wayne. Willie Nelson. It's got a whole bunch of different actors in some of these movies. Uh, Holy shit. John Carradine. Damn. I mean, if you're a western lover, Shit, 15 movies for a dollar, man. That's... I can't be beat, honestly. And then... Got... Revolution? Open your eyes. Huh. Oh, it's one of those sort of do documentaries. Okay. Interesting. They got a documentary stuff there. They got... Uh... The man who was... 
Thursday. Plus two bonus movies. That's interesting. What the fuck is this? The man who was Thursday is set in the world of Detective Gabriel Stern as he tries to infiltrate the, the Central Anarchist Council. Glenn makes his way into a secret meeting of the Anarchists where over time he gains their trust and becomes Thursday, one of the seven key figures in the Council. He only went in disguise and then the real nightmare begins. Really? Well, like a priest in- infiltrating anarchist. Okay, never heard of this one, man. That's interesting. Then you got Love and Rage, Daniel Craig, and All Things to All Men with Rufus Sewell, Gabriel Burns. Whoa, that's a, that's a cool set. Another one from Echo Bridge. That's, that's fascinating shit. Jeez. Not that. They've got... Jeez, another collection one. Fuck. More from Echo Bridge. Jeez, we're getting a lot of collection sets here, guys. Holy shit, what's it got here? Epicenter with Tracy Lords. Oh, my God. Look at that. They got the chain reaction, the day the earth moved, fire from below with Kevin Sorbo, and the day the sky exploded. Man, my God, man. I mean, I like disaster movies. Like, movies like The Day After Tomorrow is really cool. Uh, hell, man, 2012 is awesome. I mean, well, parts of it is awesome. Let's put it that way. I mean, some of disaster films are really good, and there's other disaster films that are crap. I mean, you know, the disaster movie with Tracy Lords. I mean, come on. <laughs> it could be cool, but I kind of doubt it. Disaster cheapo films. <sighs> All kinds of hilarity. Let me tell you. Uh, then they've got... Oh, shit, they've got the original Step Up. Fuck. Damn, man. Two dancers, two worlds, one dream. Oh, baby, man. Channing motherfucking Tatum, dude. Man, I gotta give Channing Tatum some props, okay? Because this guy, he does know how to dance, man. This this guy, I mean, I, I remember seeing him in Magic Mike. I'm like, holy shit. Like, like, no one's got shit on this guy. Like, fuck. He's good, man. I wasn't the biggest fan of Step Up. Actually, what am I saying? I'm not the biggest fan of any of the Step Up movies, but... I don't know, there's something about that intriguing, I guess. To a certain degree. I will say this much. There is certain movies like Step Up that I like. Like, um, Save the Last Dance, which is not a bad one. Honestly, I believe with Julia Stiles, which my mom really liked that one. There's a couple of them out there. Step Up wasn't my favorite, but... I mean, it started a whole fucking franchise, though. I mean, you gotta give it credit for something, but... For a dollar? Eh, the DVD's not bad. Uh, then they've got... Words and Pictures with Clive Owen and Julia Binoche. Huh. I don't think I've heard of this one either. Prep school English teacher. A war between words and pictures. And process. Ah, romance. Okay. I like Clive Owen. Clive Owen's good. I'm not always the biggest fan of everything he does. But when he's good, he's good. Julia Binoche. I haven't seen her in a lot of stuff as of late. Hmm. Might, might be an interesting one. They got that. They've got... Let's see here. Uh, the Kumar's at number 42. Okay, they got that. Oh, Jesus Christ. They've got, they, seriously, they got That's My Boy with Sandler and Sandberg. Oh, my God, man. What the fuck? I saw this, dude. I saw this in the motherfucking movie theater, man. Fuck my life, dude. You know, look. This is not a bad comedy. All things considered, there are moments here that I like. I like the ridiculousness of Sandler being being the father and just being so over the top and, and ridiculous, man. I mean, there, there's something about it that I like. He, he just doesn't give a fuck, which I appreciate. But it's not one of Sandler's best. And I'm not really even much of a fan of Andy Samberg. I mean, some of the comedy he does is good, truth be told, but... Uh, I don't see in this movie he plays the straight man and I don't think it really works in this movie I mean Sandler is so ridiculous that you kind of have to be the straight man but mm, I mean I uh, I I thought the movie was okay I mean some of later Sandler stuff I was, wasn't into I mean some of the stuff like Grown Ups the first Grown Ups is good Grown Ups 2 is oh. and some of that Netflix stuff man I mean some of it's not bad but Damn, man. Some of, some, of, some of that shit is cringe. That's my boy is okay. Uh, for a dollar? Okay. 
And then they got Arnold, which I know we've definitely seen this one before. Man, Mario Van Peebles, dude. God. Back in the day, man, Mario Van Peebles was was the shit. God. I haven't seen him in something in a long time. You got the attack based on the controversial international bestseller. Everyone with haunting performances. Oh, is Israeli Palestine about the homeland and secrets and life and death? Okay, very very interesting. These movies are very fascinating. Not a fan of all of them, but there's certain movies that I really like. Very dramatic stuff. Could be interesting. They got that. They also have Romeo and Juliet. With Haley Steinfeld, the most dangerous love story ever told. God, I don't, I didn't even know they actually made another Romeo and Juliet. Damian Lewis, Cody Smith, McPhee, Paul Giamatti. No, I don't remember them making any of this kind of stuff. Well, that's fascinating. Holy shit. Huh. They, they, they make a lot of Romeo and Juliet movies over the years. They're different takes on them. Like, you know, they have that Leonardo DiCaprio one, which honestly is pretty good. They Hell, Troma has even made a fucking Romeo and Juliet movie. A twisted one, a fucked up one, but they didn't make it. Very interesting take. I mean, Romeo and Juliet, like a lot of these movies, are kind of timeless, right? I mean, these tales, they've been told what many, many times over many, many de- decades and generations. They're never going to stop being told. There's always going to be new inventions of the same tale over and over. And so, Romeo and Juliet is just one of those ones, man. Interesting. I love Haley Steinfeld. Hmm. Could be interesting. Then, then they also have... Ah, the paper boy. Really great one, man. This is a great, great drama thriller, man. A great fucking cast, man. Zach Efron, McConaughey, Cusack, Kidman. Man, what a great one, dude. Wow. I know we've definitely seen this in a previous sale, but I don't think we've seen the Blu-ray. That, for a dollar, is a damn good deal. Then we have John Dies at the End. Holy shit, look at this, man. What a great movie, dude. Holy crap. Wow, man. I can't believe they have this. Dude, I haven't seen this one in a long-ass time, man. Holy shit. Dude, and the only reason I watched this was because of Don Coscarelli. I mean, Phantasm, Bubba Hotep, Beastmaster. Dude, that guy has done some classic movies, man. This is like a really wild, weird, over-the-top acid trip of a movie. I'm serious. Like, there's some weird, wild imagery in here and some weird action sequences and some crazy characters this is a very weird movie that's i don't know if it really makes a lot of sense i gotta admit like there's certain points where in this movie i'm like i am so fucking confused here i don't know what the fuck is going on but i'm having a ball dude this is great this is a one of those weird sci-fi movies but you're but if you're up for a weird sci-fi man give this one a look dude this is great holy shit for a dollar for the blu-ray dude that's awesome holy shit they got that Super Bowl champions, Jodorowsky, Officer Down, which I know we've definitely seen this in a previous sale, but not the Blu-ray, only the DVD. Wild Horses. Goodbye, horses. <laughs> okay, no, it's not that type of movie, guys. Oh, boy. Robert Duvall, James Franco, and Josh Hardnett. Nobody is above the law. Probably a good, like, I, I I think I remember this one. It was kind of one of those sort of, like, like old school western dramas type of movies. Probably a de- decent one. It wasn't something that I was interested in, but I like the actors, though. Hmm. That's not, probably not bad. Not bad. Left Behind. We've seen Left Behind before at the Dollar Tree, but I gotta admit that this movie is... It's 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 decent, honestly. It's not great. I mean, they've got some good actors in here. I mean, Nicolas Cage, Chad Michael Murray, Jordan Sparks. I mean, some good actors here. See, with Nick Cage, there are certain movies that are better than others. There are certain movies that are just, honestly, like paycheck movies, I would say. Like, ones that he did for a paycheck just for the sake of doing it and just getting money off it. 
I mean, it's still a decent film, but it's not great. It's kind of, kind of cheapo. I mean, sort of the day of uh, of the rapture and you know chaos and thirty thousand feet. Yeah, it's okay. It's not great. It's just okay. I mean, it's it's Nick Cage though. So if you like Nick Cage, why not? But just saying that they got in order of disappearance. Stellan Skarsgård, ooh. Full of icy landscapes and icier hearts. Flashes of Fargo and Tarantino, really. When father uncovers his son's murder, he begins to unravel. Once an upstanding citizen, he embarks on a bloodthirsty quest for revenge that escalates into a full-blown international gang war. With darkly funny humor reminiscent of Tarantino and the Coen brothers, finds himself caught up in a world not his own. Interesting. I would have never thought it was in the vein of Coen Brothers or Fargo or something, but I'm assuming it's like really quirky characters with this sort of revenge thriller mixed in, in some ways. I mean, I like Stellan Skarsgård. I think Stellan Skarsgård is a really great actor. A lot of people found him through the Thor films, and by the way, he is he is funny as shit in the in the, the Thor films. But he's such a really great actor, man. Interesting revenge thriller with a little bit of quirky comedy mixed in. Maybe? Possible. Oh, they got that. They have... High Rise. Oh, with Tom Hiddleston, Jeremy Irons, Sienna Miller, Luke Evans, and Elizabeth Moss. That is a goddamn cast. Holy shit. I don't know if I've ever heard of this one. Tom Hiddleston stars as Dr. Robert Lang, the newest resident of a luxurious apartment in a high-tech skyscraper Lofty location places them amongst society's upper class and quickly settles in and meets the other tenants. But as power outages become more frequent and building flaws emerge mainly on the lower floors, social strata begins to crumble. Oh, interesting. So it's almost like he's a rich guy, he's in this high rise with other rich people, and suddenly once they're trapped, like that whole idea of of like, you know, I'm better than you and everything, totally like turns deadly. That's interesting, man. I I don't know, this looks really cool. The cast is amazing and I love Hiddleston, man. Hiddleston's great, I mean, Loki is awesome, but he's such a really great charismatic actor. God, this looks cool. This might be an interesting film to check out. That might be interesting, dude. Not bad. Then they've got The Protector 2 with Tony Jaa, yeah, baby, and Reza, (laughs) oh my god, look at that, look at that great slip, man, oh, cool, god, I, I might have seen The Protector 2, I know I've seen The Protector, but maybe parts of The Protector 2, I gotta admit, Tony Jaa is really cool, man, he, is one martial arts badass motherfucker. He truly is, dude. He is really great. And I guess the problem, though, with Tony Jaw Times is that some of the stuff he picks, like some of the movies, I mean, he's good in them to a certain extent, but, like, the movies sometimes are kind of shit. Like, that Monster Hunter movie, like, he's not bad in the movie, but the, the movie is kind of garbage. So uh, maybe, maybe he needs to pick better films, but he's he's badass in the in the Protector, man. I mean, the Protector series is, is pretty, pretty cool. You know, I just love, if you're a martial arts person, like a martial arts actor, like, you need your own series of films. Like, you know, Donnie Yen has Ip Man, and, you know, Jean-Claude Van Damme has, like, the Universal Soldier stuff, and, and like, there's all these other kind of movies, and, and, you know, Tony Jaa has to have his own thing. Like, everyone has to have their own, like, franchise or some shit. If you don't have a franchise, you're not truly badass. I mean, come on now, man. <laughs> and interesting. Now, that, they got more John Dies at the End, Love... Tin Man, okay. With Zoe Dachanel, Alan Cummings, and Richard Dreyfus. Very nice. Now, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, this was a sci fi event movie. Like, it premiered on the sci fi channel, if I'm not mistaken, because I remember the ads about it. And, you know, sci fi would, would do every so often these event films, right? 
and like the Tin Man, and then watch, watch, watch the next, the next segment of Tin Man tomorrow night. Like you know, all that stuff, man. I think this was one of them. I'm, I'm almost positive. It sort of takes again that that I, idea from Wizard of Oz. It sort of spins it into its own thing, dude. Like I said, some of them work, and others don't. This one, I don't remember much about it. I watched it a long time back, but I remember enjoying it. But it wasn't perfect. It definitely had its shortcomings and definitely not, not as good as some of the other ones. I mean, I would definitely take Return to Oz. Heads and tails o- over this one for sure, man. Not bad, though. Blu-ray for a, a, a dollar. Not bad. Uh, then they got the Journey Home. Bridget Moynihan. <laughs> okay. Oh, look at that cute bear that will eventually grow to slice you and eat you. Yay! <laughs> Sometimes you need a little help to find your way home. Okay, yeah, it's sort of the the fight for for survival, and then you know you know making friends with the bear, and oh, it's cute, and ah, uh, of course, <laughs> we've seen this movie a time or two. I do like Bridget Moynihan though. Uh, that you've got River World with Alan Cummings and Laura Vandervoort. Based on the acclaimed literary series. I don't know much about this, but I love the cover, though. The cover's cool. The journey begins here. After being killed in an explosion, Matt finds himself reawakened on an unusual planet where people from all eras of history have been simultaneously resurrected under the watchful eye of a mysterious alien force. With a skilled 13th century female warrior and charismatic riverboat captain Mark Twain, Matt sets off across the dangerous unknown terrain determined to find his lost fiance. Well, that's interesting. Actually, that's wild. That's a wild one. So basically, he dies and he goes into this other planet where all these people from history are resurrected. God, I wonder who else is in here, man. <laughs> like, I'm serious. Like, you've got, like, Mark Twain and maybe some other people from, like, old school s- centuries and decades ago. How wouldn't it be weird, like, seeing, uh, like, Albert Einstein in this shit? <laughs> Like, like Albert Einstein with a sword, like like trying to kill like alien fuckers. Like, oh god, oh my god, it's like a weird, almost like this kind of like reminds me of like Bill and Ted in some way. I mean, Bill and Ted is so not this, but I mean, just about like seeing people from from history. And what a wild film this is! No, I've never heard of River World. That's odd. That and then at the end, ah oh, boy. Christmas Lodge. Good God, man. We Really? We're, we're already doing Christmas stuff again? Oh, Lord God. Oh. I can't. I, I can't do it, man. I, I, I'm, I'm, I still, I'm still in PTSD mode <laughs> of Christmas. God, man. But, you know, I gotta say, no Hanukkah Lodge? Seriously? I mean, the Jews can't get a lodge? Just saying. I mean, Hanukkah Lodge can be just as good as Christmas Lodge. Just, just floating it. Just floating it out there, guys. Just saying. <sighs> we won't truly have equality until we have Hanukkah Lodge. Am I right? Then we got Gwen, a Shudder original, baby. Now, I did not find this last time, but a lot of people found Gwen last time during the Dollar Tree sale. I didn't find it, but I was very intrigued, and I definitely wanted to to see it at the Dollar Tree, and I never got a chance to at any of the stores I went to, man. But finally, I'm getting to see it, man. The Dark Outside is calling for her. I like that. I really like like that, that, that cover art, man. Gwen is a young girl whose life seems to be collapsing around her, struggling with her mother's mysterious illness, her father's absence, and a group of angry villagers threatening to take her farm. Let's find the strength to guide her family through the darkness, but as a malevolent presence begins to take grip of her home, it becomes apparent there is a greater evil. Really? I I have a feeling this is, like, very much religious horror. I just have a wild feeling it's very much re- religious and an evil presence and some sort of say, say, say satanic evil that's coming into their lives. Very interesting. I've heard some intriguing stuff about Gwen. Might have to give this one a look at some point. Very interesting. I'm glad to finally see it and with the slip. 
not bad, man. Not bad at all. He got 22 Jump Street, Pluey, ah, and boy, Revenge of the Red Fury. Oh, boy. And Dove approved. Ant Boy goodness. <laughs> oh, I've yet to dive into any of the Ant Boy films. I, I'm intrigued, but I'm also a little terrified. Just, just saying, man. Oh, man, that man that that costume almost looks like straight from like the Tick or some shit. <laughs> and then they got Pure Country. We've seen that one before. To me, we've seen Into the Ashes. We've seen that one before as well. A score to settle. Not bad, Nicolas Cage. Pretty, pretty decent overall. Not too bad. Actually, I kind of like this one. The revenge aspect and and him sort of being this this sort of you know out to to kill stress type of dude. I kind of like this one. Not not crazy. Well, there's moments of crazy Nicolas Cage, but more like dramatic. Like you know, like I'm gonna I'm gonna kill him. They're all gonna die. Almost like, almost like a Liam Neeson thing. Like, like, like you could put Liam Neeson in there, and 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 you know, you'd be like, okay, he fits. Yeah, it's kind of that that kind of movie. And then they got Scooby Doo Two Film Collection, The Operative, which I know we've seen this one before at a previous sale. Prey, The Hunter becomes the Hunted. Nice. How far would you go to clear your name? First electrifying season. Oh, it's actually a, a series. Okay. Well, that's cool. Not bad. From from the BBC. The BBC does some really intriguing shows, man. Hmm. It's not bad. Not that. They've got... One Last Thing? Hmm? Kind of like a romance movie? A romance drama? Something like that? I guess it looks okay. No, no, not, not really my, my, my thing. Then they got the Secret of Nim. Oh my God! What a great, what what a great flick, man, dude. That's so cool that they have Secret of Nim here. This is a really great one, man. I love this one. I don't know if I'd say underrated, but the people who really love it really love it. But it's not as well known as some of the other animated stuff out there. But but honestly, really solid, dude. I'm actually surprised to see this for a, on Blu-ray for a dollar. That's cool. London Spy, which we've seen before. Alien Invasion, which I know we've definitely seen b- b- before, man. A counter from hell. I-, I love that. Like, like, bitch, run. Run. Get the fuck out of there. <laughs> like, like they they totally are taking from that Alien 3 thing, where, where like, the alien is, like, right in, in like, Ripley's face. They're t- totally taking that, man. Rip- ripping that off. Receiving a patch containing a mysterious documentary. A young journalist and UFO investigator. Oh, of course, she comes front and center with with the stuff that she's inve- investigating. Oh man, alien invasion stuff. Some alien stuff is really cool. Others, uh, kind of, is kind of iffy. Oh, um, they got that Josie, which I believe we've seen in a previous sale. Pretty good fl- flick, honestly. It's not bad. Got that. Got Source. Travel the road, huh? Interesting. That probably looks like a good one. They got that. They got Fish and Chips, the movie. Sure, why not? They got that. Back to the Sea. Definitely like a Shark Tale ripoff movie. God. They got My Hope America with Billy Graham. Okay. The stuff you see for a dollar. Oh my God, no, dude! I suffered through seeing so many copies of Surf Sub Two One One Dollar Tree sale. I'm so not going back there again. Fuck that. <laughs> no. Now, Blood Viking. We've seen that before. Fifteen Seventeen to Paris. Checkmate with with Average Chunky Joe. <laughs> we've seen this one before. I got that. Ah, Boar. Nice. I've heard decent things about Boar. This is a Shudder exclusive, man. I heard this was actually a pretty decent little horror flick, man. About the Australian Outback and boars that are hunting people. And it's just this bloodthirsty, brutal hunting of these boars that, 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 are, that are killing these people on the Outback. I heard it's actually really fun. And very there with with the with the blood and the gore, like really gruesome. I've heard decent things about Boar actually. I've heard mixed too, but I don't know, like like 
Like brutal man eating boars? I could dig it. I'm saying. I could. They got boar. They got. Ah, Russian bride. We've definitely seen this b- before, man. But I gotta say, dude, I love evil Corbin Burnson, man. There's something about evil Corbin that I love, man. I mean, I mean, the dentist movies. I mean, come on, guys. He's pretty good, man. Yes, he's, I like him as the good person at some at some point. But I mean, like, I'm a Corbin Burnson guy. I mean, you know, Major League and and LA Law. I mean, he's 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 a he's a good actor, dude. Oh my God, evil. E- Evil Corbin Burton. So good, man. So, so good. Score to settle. The best of the Chris Rock show. That's a, an old school DVD. Look at that. With a snapper case. Nice. God, I haven't seen a snapper case in a long time. Shit. Man. I remember watching the, the Chris Rock show. Good stuff ba- back in the day, man. On HBO. Man, it's old school DVD. Goodness. Shit. That yeah, they've got... Ah, the mercy, Colin Firth and Rachel Vice. Hmm, based on the incredible true story. Looks looks pretty interesting. Interesting dra- drama. They got that. Score to settle and heavenly deposit. Hmm, how heavenly? Well, heavenly deposit. Well, all you need to deposit is pretty much a dollar, and then it's yours. Lying and stealing, which we've definitely seen this one before. Remember that one. Pure Country. <laughs> More Amp Boy. Gotta love it. Pluey, 22 Jump Street. Gwen. Pretty much the same stuff in this one here as well. Yeah, mostly the same point. Ho- hollow Point's a bit different, but I know we've seen this at a previous sale as well. Mercy there. And they got... Tad and the Lost Explorer, another one of those really weird Dollar Tree animated movies, man. God, they, what, did they literally fucking grow on trees? <laughs> God, they got, that's my man with Donna Michi. Oh my God, this is an old school one, guys. Holy shit. Wow, this is old, old school. Virtually unseen by the public for more than 60 years. Quiet little tone poem of love. Wow, holy shit. Man, like, Don Amici, dude, like, people remember him from movies like, well, I, I mean, Cocoon, I believe he was in Cocoon and everything. Um, he's he's in that Bigfoot movie with John Lithgow, and I can't remember the name of it to save my, uh, my life and p- put on the spot, but, like... Oh, yes, Harry and the Hendersons. That's what it is. Yeah, he was in Harry and the Hendersons, and that's what I really remember him from. I love that movie, dude. But, man, I've never seen any really, like, movies with him as a really young man. Wow. This is wild to see this here, man. A really old-school movie, old-school DVD. Shit. That's crazy. That's cool to see that, man. They've also got... Oh, what if? Best Friends has its benefits with Daniel Radcliffe, Adam Driver, and Rafe Spall. Now, I've seen this movie, and I gotta admit, I really do like this one a lot, man. I really do. I think it's a pretty good romantic comedy. You know, I can't say that all romantic comedies, the newer ones, I really like. Some of them, I kind of feel like they're too... I don't want to say, like, mushy or anything, but, like... I don't know, too schmaltzy, maybe, but I kind of like what if. I kind of like this guy that is in this, he, he, he wants, he wants her, but she's with somebody else, but they're friends, it's kind of complicated, and I like the relationship he has with Adam Driver, I think that's really cool, man. It's a good one, honestly. I, I, I like this one quite, quite a bit. For a dollar, it's not a bad deal, man. Uh, that they've got... Oh, Invasion of the Body Snatchers. The old school one from the 70s, baby. Donald Sutherland, Brooke Adams, Leonard Nimoy. Oh, man, so, so good, man. God, I love this movie. This is one of the best, best horror movies of all time. Seriously, it is, man. I love the effects. I love the pod people. I love the social commentary. 
And I love how you just can't get away from these people. No matter how hard you try, you can't get away from them. I, I love that so much, man. And the ending, the end scene in this is iconic. Classic, man. I love this movie so goddamn much, man. I mean, I'm a fan of Invasion of Body Snatchers in general. Like the one from, I believe, the, the, the 50s or the 60s that I really love. This one, even the one from, like, the 90s that I really appreciated as well, man. I, this... This always gets remade every so often. The last one I remember was The Invasion with Nicole Kidman, which wasn't honestly as good. It was kind of a lesser Invasion of the Body Snatchers movie. Yeah, I still appreciated it, but the 70s one, I think, is like the best of them all. So good, man. If you've never seen this one, classic, classic horror, man. God, so good. Yeah, they've got... Hmm, The End of Violence with Bill Pullman, Andy McDowell, and Gabriel Byrne. Ooh, this is an older movie. What is this? With Hollywood movie making as a metaphor, director Truman weaves a modern day tale of commercialism, consumerism, and introspection. Successful Hollywood producer, having made his fortune producing films with no redeeming social value, experiences a life altering event when he is kidnapped and almost killed. Irony is not lost on Mike when he decides to leave the world of Hollywood behind, a world he once embraced. Overing Mike's universe are his beautiful beloved wife. Who has mounting concerns about it, a world where surveillance and big brother like tactics may be on the increase to keep society in check. That's interesting. Udo Kier is in this as well. Shit. Oh, wow. No, I've never heard of this one. But it kind of intrigues me. Like, a director who's had a life-altering experience does a very interesting movie and sort of the sort of, like, creepiness and and, like, looking over people's shoulder and sort of the horror of it. In, God, that's interesting. Oh, I've never heard of that, but I love the actors, man. Shit. This is a fascinating one. That might, um, might be worth ch- checking out, actually. It's not bad. They also have... Uh, they have a Temple. From the writer of Your Next and Blair Witch and the exact producer of the Ring Trilogy. Not a bad cover, man. I, I mean, man, why, why didn't they take him to the dentist? This is what happened. This is literally like, like you know, they, they have on the dentist thing, when you go into the office, they have a picture of, a, of dog's teeth, okay? And that's what's going to happen to you. And that's what happened to this kid. Start him out early, goddammit. Fuck. Jesus, man, that's a picture of what, what not to do. Go to the dentist, motherfucker. <laughs> Good Jesus. Some places should remain hidden. Three American tourists follow a mysterious map deep into the jungles of Japan, searching for an ancient temple. When spirits entrap them, their adventure quickly becomes a horrific nightmare. Oh, interesting. An ancient temple and secrets and spirits after them. Ugh, I feel for them. They got to deal with, with the kid with nasty teeth. Good luck. <laughs> well, it sounds interesting. I'm not going to lie, man pretty cool they got feral which i know we've seen before oh the blu-ray of nick and nora's infinite playlist that's a great steal man for a dollar that's really great man this is a great great underrated romantic comedy man i really like this michael sarah cat dennings i love the music here i love the chemistry but between them i can't say that i like everything michael sarah to be honest with you because some stuff I kind of like, like Super Bad is really cool, and some of Arrested De- Development, this movie, but then there's other stuff he's done where I'm like, yeah, he ain't that good. This is a solid one, man. Not many people talk about this, but so good, dude. Wow. Can't believe it for a dollar, man. That's great. Yeah, they've got Christina Aguilera. Yeah, no. Nah. They got that. Oh, Stargate Atlantis. Dude, you have no idea how much I love Stargate Atlantis. Stargate Atlantis is the tits, man. I love Atlantis. I love Stargate SG-1, but Atlantis is so cool, man. I watched this from the very beginning when it first aired, and I'm in love with all the characters and the effects and the sci-fi. It's fun science fiction, man. Stargate Atlantis is so cool, dude. God, I love that, man. Then they've got Crossing Point. One cartel, two cops, five kilos in 12 hours good luck baby Wal- walmart select as well okay a young couple embark on the vacation of a lifetime but things take a frightening turn when the girlfriend is kidnapped by a drug dealer who demands that her boyfriend smuggle back cocaine into the u.s or she will be killed damn it ah 
you can never have a good vacation, man. Something always got to fuck up, man. It's usually with cocaine, too. Fuck it. Fucking cocaine ruins everything. <laughs> Luke Goss and Tom Sizemore. Well, you know it's good if it's got Tom Sizemore in it. Uh, you know, I don't know about that one, guys. Uh, it, it could be kind of a good little thriller. Maybe. Now uh, that... You got... Let's see... No Battles from Beyond. Still Alice with Julianne Moore, Alec Baldwin, and Kristen Stewart. I'm not sure I've heard about this one. Sony Pictures Classics. I was all unhappily married with these with three grown children as a renowned linguistic professor who starts to forget words. Which receives a diagnosis of early onset Alzheimer's. Ooh, that's interesting. So it's sort of the bond between a family and her slow, slowly forgetting things in, in her life. Well, that's probably a really solid, dramatic, really heartfelt movie. And probably fantastic acting in here as well. Like I said, I, I love Jul- Julianne Moore, man. That's, that's probably really good, man. It probably is. Uh, then, The Greater Yes. True story of Amy Newhouse. Oh, is this one of those faith... Oh, yes, it is. Another Dove approved, of course, faith, faith-based. Uh, you know what You know what goes on in this fucking movie. <laughs> Up there, they got Jungle Shuffle. Got another one of those Dollar Tree animated ones. Fuck. Ooh, Batman Gotham Knight. DC Universe an- animated, baby. Batman. One of the best. Oh, that's cool. Killer Croc. The Scarecrow. Oh, man. Oh, God, I love Batman. Fuck. <laughs> Batman's so cool. God, and he has some of the best rogues gallery of villains like you've ever seen, man. He's he's got some of the best villains of all time. Even the lesser known ones are cool. Like Killer Croc and Scarecrow are awesome, dude. Man, man, Batman's awesome, dude. He really is. He got oh, they got the animated Constantine movie for for a dollar on Blu-ray. That's great. I've seen this one. Great Constantine movie, man. Love this one so much. Constantine is is awesome. I mean, he's a great character, but this animated one is really cool. Really great. If you love Constantine, this movie is is awesome, dude. Wow, I can't believe for a dollar, man. That's awesome. Then Secrets in the Walls with Jerry Ryan. Wow. They are not alone. Yeah, no shit. Terror for sale. Jerry Ryan, man. God, I remember her, man. Seven of Nine... Dude, that was my that, that was my jam, dude. Like seven of nine. I mean, let's be honest. Most of us watched that show for seven of nine, and we didn't watch it because you know we we like love the story of seven of nine. You know why we watched it? I mean, come on, man. <laughs> let's let's be real here. God, I haven't seen Jerry Ryan in something in a while. Last thing I saw her in was actually was was Picard. She was not bad in that actually. The horror movie with Jerry Ryan. Interesting. I think we might have seen that one before. That they have, ooh, the Midnight Man, with Vinny Jones, William Forsythe, Doug Jones, and Brent Spiner. Data, what? A hitman with a gift, a mission, problem. Hmm. No pain, no mercy. Good God, man, get that out of your hand. <laughs> God. As a slayer with style, Doug Jones shines. An assassin with a genetic disorder that renders him unable to feel pain is sent on a high-stakes assignment that turns his world upside down upon awakening from a brutal head that you can feel pain for the first time. Really? It's not getting his most prized... Oh! Interesting! I like that. Sort of some guy that doesn't feel pain is an assassin, which, you know, makes sense. Suddenly feels pain, and now he's... Now there's a ticking clock. Ooh, I like that. Doug Jones... I love Doug Jones, man, and Brent Spiner. Oh my god, dude. This could be fun. This Vinny Jones is cool. This could be a cool little action movie. Man, with those type of actors, it's gotta be at least somewhat fun, dude. God, that's probably fun. It really is. Then they got Nomad the Warrior. Oh man, this is totally ripping off 300. Totally. Yeah, Gladiator and the Father. Yeah. Yeah, total, total 300 ripoff. Come on, man. Total Gladiator 300 ripoff. Now that. World Series. Spider-Man. We've seen that one before. Oh, the newer Little Women film on DVD. Wow, that's actually interesting seeing this here. God, I didn't wasn't expecting this one so soon. 
the little women is really really great man i i mean they've done little women so many times man and it's always getting reinvented like every generation man there's always another little women film this one wasn't bad i kind of enjoyed it but i like sort of later ones like the one from the 90s i re really enjoy this one's not bad i mainly liked it for leah thompson that you know i mean i'm a back to the future fan so of course i love leah thompson but it's not a bad one it's decent it takes the the sort of little women idea and sort of brings it into modern day it's a decent if if you like the little women's it's not so bad that they have superheroes what if superheroes were real who's to say they're not ah right Touching and inspirational superheroes show that the potential for greatness lies in all of us. Director Michael Barnett travels the country capturing ordinary people committing extraordinary acts. Really? So this is like a documentary or some shit? Like, people, like, go out of their way to, to pretend to be heroes? Like, dude, like, I mean, I mean, I want to save the world as much as anybody, man. I want to stop, like, people, but I also know that I'm, like a short jewish guy <laughs> that, that like has no tr training in combat whatsoever like i would be fucked okay no way man like god bless their hearts that, that they want to kick ass in the world i mean appreciate it but i mean what do you do when you're not like fighting crime do you just hang out at like the local mcdonald's just waiting for like something to happen and shit i mean it wouldn't be bad i mean the fries are cool and, you know, you can have a fish fillet wait, waiting for somebody to steal a purse. I mean, you know, there is that. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, mean, I, I I wouldn't attempt it, but God bless their hearts, man. Jesus. They got that. They got Imperium. Ah, with Daniel Radcliffe, man. Defend your nation. Become your enemy. I remember this one. It's an interesting one where I believe he goes undercover to this 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 sort of like almost like neo Nazi. He he's pretending to be a neo Nazi and infiltrating them. I believe it's a good one, man. And I like Daniel Radcliffe, man. I, you know what's so great about Daniel Radcliffe is right because he's Harry Potter, and everybody knows him as Harry Potter. But he has done so much interesting stuff in his career to get away from that Harry Potter image. He's done a lot of really great and, and interesting movies that has so far away from that character that I love that he's done that, man. He's not trying to do the same thing over and over again, and I really do appreciate that, man. Imperium was actually pretty good, honestly. It's a really good, good one, dude. Then yeah, they've got... Oh, my God, they've got Knight Rider. <laughs> they've got season two with the Hoff, baby. With the Hoff, motherfucker. Oh, my God. This was like prime Hoff. I mean, let, let's be real, man. This was Prime Hoff at the time, and Knight Rider was what was the shit back in the day. It was awesome, dude. I mean, I think they tried to, like, remake Knight Rider, didn't they, not too long ago? And, like, it totally failed, man. I can see why. I mean, you don't have the Hoff, man. I mean, that's that's part of your problem. But, I mean, God, Hal Hasselhoff, man. I mean, I guess you could also say Baywatch was his prime, but I wasn't really much of a Baywatch fan. I mean, outside of, of seeing the chicks run on the beach, but I mean, oh God, old school Hoff, man. You gotta love it. Fuck. Then, and, ooh, some Doctor Who love? The return of Doctor Mysterio. Ah, my girlfriend would love this. My girlfriend is a huge Doctor Who fan. And can't say I blame her, man, because it, it is... Doctor Who is popular, man. The people who love it really lo love it, man. I did hear that people weren't the biggest on Capaldi. That Capaldi was not one of their favorite Who's, but they don't hate him. They just think he's kind of a lesser one. And I think my girlfriend kind of agrees with, with that. But regardless, I mean, Doctor Who for a dollar? I mean, can you really beat it? Huh. Silencer. Ambition. Little Miss Doolittle. More weird animated... Disney, God, that's so odd, man. Ripping off Disney like that, Jesus. Uh, it's Domestics, Adventures of the Chocolate Factory, you know, Barcelona, Ip Man, Harvest. Ah, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon from from Kmart. Oh, fantastic, dude! Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I've said it earlier. It's awesome. I love this movie, man. I mean, it's so great. Chow Yun Fab, Michelle Yeoh. The fight sequences are beautifully done, beautifully executed, masterful, graceful. 
it is one of the best martial arts movies of all time. And I truly mean that, man. I mean, not that I've watched every martial arts movie in the world, but this is one of the classics by far, man. I mean, the DVD for a dollar is awesome. That's great. The White King. Ten movie horror collection from Echo Bridge. Of course, it's from Echo Bridge. Legacy of Evil. Asylum, Dark Spirits, The Dark, Feeding Grounds, Blood Predator, The Shadows, Netherworld, Living in Peril. Interesting. You know, I, I gotta say, man, like, Echo Bridge does a lot of these collections, man. And so, you know, a lot of these movies, some of them I've never heard. I mean, they've got good actors in them. Echo McDowell, Robert Patrick, Stephen Lang, Nev Campbell? Really, in the dark? Some very interesting people in, in here, man. You know, it's kind of interesting. With these collections, some of them are really good. Like, they're great gems in here. And other times, they're really shit, man. I mean, it's kind of a crapshoot with these horror collections. Or any collection, for that matter. You're buying it. I mean, for a dollar, you can't really beat a collection set like, like this. But at the same time, just know that when you're watching this stuff, you're really taking a gamble. Because some of it's great and some of it's not... It's really a mixed bag at the end of the day. I mean, tr truly it is. Then, Beavers, see, Scorpion, Running from My Roots. We've seen that one before. Gangsterland, there. Frontera, with Ed Harris, Michael Pena, Eva Longoria, Amy Madigan. Western drama? Oh, Miguel, hard-working father and devoted husband. Says the border illegally, oh, was wrongly accused of murdering his wife. Oh, that's interesting. He investigates the wife's death and, and the evidence and fight for his, his life. That could be interesting. I kind of like that idea. An interesting, definitely a Western drama, man. That looks kind of good, I'm not going to lie. Looks pretty good. That awake abduction. Ah, the legend of Halloween. You gotta love it. And the last three boxes of physical media goodness. The cart is empty. We went through all of these boxes. And down to the last three, man. Damn, has it been a wild ride so far, man. Let's dive in. Uh, Barbie, of course, more Barbie. Pocket Listings, Diablo, Brave Town, Blue Iguana. A lot of the same stuff in this box. Bad Teacher. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> um, well, at least we get the Clintons. <laughs> that. Uh, let's see. Frenzy. Warning shot. The scene, or the scent of rain and lightning. The truth is deadlier than the crime. With Maggie Grace, Logan Miller, Will Patton, Make a Monroe. Nice. From uh, It Follows. Shit. What is this? Based on the best selling now, The Scent of Rain and Lightning tells the story of Jody Linder, a Midwestern 20 something who's past three services when the man convicted of killing her parents is an oh okay oh so sort of like justice and everything interesting huh it looks kind of interesting i don't know if i if it's really up my alley but the actors would definitely kind of intrigue me on this one and with the slip too not bad could be good though hmm it might be actually bad at that they got Ah, another Shudder exclusive, but we're seeing a lot of Shudder this time around. From the last ones out, Escape is the only cure. Oh, what is this? Henry Williamson wakes from surgery. He's paralyzed, alone in the dark within, within hours. The hospital has been overrun by the victims of a new virus. They're gripped by a bloodthirsty zombie-like rage. Oh, okay, so it's kind of like, in a lot of ways, like maybe like a take on 28 Days Later or something like that? I, I mean, they're not zombies. It's kind of interesting because when we talk about like rage like viruses, see there's this whole debate about 28 days later and there's this whole debate of basically like that it's that it's like 
a zombie movie, but it's not really zombies. It's more of a rage virus. It's not zombies exactly. And there's this whole debate, man. I mean, I like the idea of them being overrun and the fight for survival. It reminds me of like 20 Days Later or like, or like the the remake to Dawn of the Dead. This one could be interesting, but it seems like a ripoff of better movies. Maybe I mean, the cover's cool though. They got that. They've got. Ah, Operation Dunkirk. Ah, well, probably a more cheap over a version of Dunkirk, dare I say. Yeah, it it, yeah, it kind of looks cheap. I'm already kind of sensing that already, guys. I mean, Dunkirk is a really, really very interesting idea of, of a battle movie and a war film, but you gotta with any of these war movies, you gotta put the money behind it, man. If you don't have the money to make a really solid war film, just don't do it, dude. I mean. I, you know, if you can't pull off the, the shit that Saving Private Ryan did, then, man, you don't deserve to be a war film, okay? I'm just saying, bro. Jeez, man. Got that. They got Red vs. Blue, Season 10. They got The Wedding Chapel with Shelley Long. Holy shit. I've seen her in a long time. When you least expect it, amazing things can happen. Trust your heart. Uninspired and newly single painter Sarah. Oh, yeah, it's one of those ro romantic comedies. Oh, man, I have almost forgot. It's Dove approved. Of course, Faith. Yep, 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 yep. Seeing a lot of Dove this time around, man. Dollar Tree lo loves their Dove. Better Off Zed, which we've seen before. Not bad. They have McClintock. Huh. Oh, a 10 m movies plus McClintock. Oh, Echo Bridge again. John Wayne love. I mean, you gotta love John Wayne. I mean, John Wayne's just classy. When you, when you think of Westerns, you think of Clint Eastwood and you think of John Wayne, to be fair, man. Gotta love that John Wayne love, baby. Gotta love it. Not that Prey, which I believe we, yeah, we've definitely seen Prey before. Yeah, we have seen it in pre previous though. Oh, I love the cover to that. Uh, Super Bowl spy thrillers. Well, let me guess. Echo Bridge, of course, man. Eight movies, of course. Oh, and from Kmart. Hey, hey, we, you know, we got to get stuff from Kmart because, you know, they had their clothing sale. I mean, we, 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 we bought the shit for cheap. We can sell it for cheap. You know, why not? Hangman with Sandra Bullock, Hidden Agenda, Kevin Dillon, The New Republic, Saigon, Year of the Cat, Judy Tench, The Deadly Recruit with Terrence Stamp. Notorious, Spy in White, CIA Two. Interesting. Again, man, with these with these collections, man, some of these movies are going to be great. I'm not going to lie. Probably the one with Sandra Bullock is kind of kind of cool. I would imagine. Never heard of it though. But then other ones are going to be crap. It, it's just the gamble that you take, honestly, man. Uh, they got that. They got Hell Ride, which I know. I thought we may have seen this before, but maybe not. Quentin Tarantino presents Hell Ride. The Rebellion Against All There Is. Full of awesome gunfights and badass characters. Huh. From Xavier Wizard Quintantino. Oil with bikers. Oh, maybe I haven't heard of this one. Rival gang leaders. Huh. I kind of like the cover to this. And I remember back in the day, Dimension Extreme. Remember when they used to do that? Like, they used to do, like, the extreme editions of, of, the, of the Dimension titles. And almost like, like it was a, 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 of a next-level physical media, media. Like, if you want good physical media, if you want extreme, you get Dimension Extreme. <laughs> like, I remember that, dude. Oh, my God. Michael Madsen? This kind of looks kind of cool, man. I mean, the cover is pretty cool. I might, I might be interesting. Not that. Yeah, the Lost Explorer, the Tad movie. Ooh, look at that cover for Karma. What goes around? Let me guess. Comes around? Eh? Maybe? <laughs> when recent college graduate Manny has trouble making ends meet and takes a job evicting delinquent talents oh jesus man he's just asking for it isn't he oh my god with a karma demon that stonks really man who man who did you piss off well y y you're evicting delinquent tenants you're, yeah yeah you're pissing somebody off man oh god 
Oh, dude, I feel sorry for this guy. He he just he just wants a job. He just wants to make money. He wants food on his table. He wants a roof over his head. God damn it! And like she's like, you're evicting me. I need to I need to to like sick a demon on you. Like, lady, lady, I just want to afford a toothbrush, bitch. Like, come on, <laughs> fuck, Jesus. God damn, man. I feel bad for that dude. <laughs> oh, he's so fucked. But then they got the reader, which I know we've seen. Believe we've seen the previous sale. This is a really good, good one, man. For a dollar, it's a great one. Distortion. Ooh, holy shit! We got cheap thrills. The Blu-ray for a dollar. Oh my god, man! This is a really great find. Pat Healy, Ethan Embry, David Koechner. Wow, man! This is a really great movie man it's just one of those movies where like it just keeps upping the the ante more and more like just like just one upping e each other and trying to see how much you know pain they they can endure and it's it really is a lot of black humor and some really crazy like uh almost like like special effects like with the blood and the gore stuff like honestly it's a funny black comedy with some horror elements in it. Really solid film, man. I was not expecting to see this here. Holy shit. That is amazing for a dollar, man. That's really cool. Not that. Prolonged exposure. Oh, more Dean Kane straight to DVD love. Not that. Mega Shark. Of course, we've seen this. And Echo Bridge. Yes, more wonderful Echo Bridge love. They just love their collection, let me tell you. They got that. They got the keeping room. Haley Steinfeld and Sam Worthington. Huh. From Draft House. Hmm, that's interesting. Probably, probably is an interesting film. Look at that. The Blue Elephant, another one of those really weird animated films. Burning Kiss, which we've seen before. In room, Blue Elephant, Ten Bible Stories from Echo Bridge. Hey! Why not? There we go. Not that Nazi Overlord with Tom Sizemore and Dominic Swain. Oh, experience the horror of war. Experience the horror of Tom Sizemore's acting. She's a heart pounding WW2 thriller with a twist. Yeah, sure. Oh, man. Against the background of the D Day invasion, I, you know, I've seen so many movies, horror films, actually that that circle around D-Day. There's this really great one, and I can't remember the name of it offhand, where basically they're trying to stop this this, this Nazi area. They're trying to stop it. Um, and they go into this compound, and they're summoning this, this like, demon, and the demon can, can change its form, and it's a very interesting horror flick, which I kind of like. This one looks really cheap, man. I mean, you got Tom Sizemore in this one. I mean, I like Dominic Swain, don't get me wrong, he's good lo looking, but Tom Sizemore, man, lo lo and look at him. He looks so fucking bored. <laughs> like, look at him. He looks, he, he doesn't give a fuck, man. He got, he got the paycheck, he don't give a shit. Like, Jesus, man. Seriously? The fuck, man. And then they got Truth or Dare. I think we might have seen this one previously in the past. Do the Dare, or the Dare does you oh i was almost thinking it was that really terrible blumhouse truth or dare movie i'm like jesus christ i could see it being at the dollar tree eventually but a college friends head to a haunted rental in a remote town for halloween weekend there they play the game oh man these people deserve to fucking die my god they're literally in a haunted area they know they're there they're playing truth or dare and they they just and if they don't play and don't, don't go by the rules, and they're gonna die, and I hope they die in grisly ways. I hate these movies where these people literally, like, you know, they brought on themselves. They're stupid college kids that, you know, want to party and drink and, and have sex and, you know, hey, well, let's play a game of truth or dare. Well, fuck you, bro. <laughs> Jesus, God. Ah, stupid teenagers. Never learn. As long as there are stupid teenagers in the world, we get more movies like Truth or Dare. Get smart, kids.
please get some art. Oh my god, that hostage act, which we know we've seen before as well. The Shadows Collection. Eight movies. Oh, another one from Echo Bridge. Jesus Christ, man. How many collection sets do they have? Fuck. Good God, man. What the hell is here? Shadows, Backwoods, with Haley Duff, really. Feeding Grounds, and Netherworld, Blood Predator, The Black Raven, The Ghost Walks, and Gothic. Oh, this oh, this collection's a winner. <laughs> Jeez. You know, again, I'm going to say it again, man. Like, some of these are probably good movies. I've never really heard of much of them. That's not to say they're not bad, but these collections, man. That's why That's why I don't really buy collection sets. Because if I like a movie, I want to own it individually. But, I mean, for a dollar, you can't really beat it. But at the same time, like, as I said, you're, you're taking a gamble, man. Because some of them just aren't going to be good. Truly. At that, they've got Blitz, Silencer on Blu-ray, Orphan Horse, great. Oh, a horse and John Voight together, lovely. Season 1 of Wolf Blood, Disney Channel, what? In the BBC, what is this? Being a teenager is hard enough. Being a wolf blood teenager is ten times more complicated. 14-year-old Maddie loves her abilities, heightened senses, being faster, stronger, and more graceful but hates the secrets that come with them. Neither completely wolves nor humans. Wolf bloods can change from one form to another, and just as Maddie's getting ready for her first transformation, Ridian, a new boy... What? Jesus, man, you can't call him a better name? Fucking Ridian? Jesus, man, who names these people? <laughs> a new boy starts at her school, and they both instinctively know their true nature. Ridian helps Maddie master her first challenge, but after she must learn... Oh, of course. It's almost kind of like... I don't know, it kind of reminds me of True Blood or something. I mean, a Disney version of True Blood. Because let's be real, you can't be putting True Blood blood on, on the Disney Channel. That's for damn sure. I don't know, it kind of seems cool, I guess. Maybe a little bit of Twilight and True Blood mixed together. Jeez, I don't, geez, I don't know if that combo really mixes together. <laughs> I, mean, I like a werewolf tale, a good werewolf tale. And I gotta be real, man. I mean, I, there are some great werewolf movies out there. But lately, not so much, man. I mean, yeah, there's some out there, but few and far between. Hmm, I don't know. Can, can wolf blood be the, be the resurrection of, like, great werewolf tales? I fucking doubt it. <laughs> Just saying. Then they got the recall with Wesley, which we've seen before. There's this is blue. Prey. Hmm. Seven killer movies, kung fu zombies. How do you kill something that's already dead? Well, you basically get it from K Kmart. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, my God. I'm actually surprised because I thought this was going to be Echo Bridge. It's actually Mill Creek. I was ready to be like, oh, there's another Echo Bridge one. No, it's actually Mill Creek, crazy enough. Shaolin vs. Evil Dead. Shaolin vs. Evil Dead 2 because clearly... Nobody won the battle in the first one. Kung Fu Zombie, We're Going to Eat You. Spirited Killer 2 and 3. And Kung Fu from Beyond the Grave. God damn it. Really? <laughs> oh, oh, God. The cover's great. I'll give the, the a lot of credit. The cover's awesome, but... Seriously. Come on. You. I mean, it's a dollar, but you, you know. You know this is is gonna be crap i mean come on <laughs> you know it oh you so do charismata face your demons i i love that where the thing's come, coming out of the wall man and two bonus movies dark spirits and legacy of evil hmm a rookie female detective struggling to find acceptance in a police department defined by a culture of bullying and intolerance watches as things go from bad to worse as her chief suspect is Series of brutal ritualistic murders. You know what it kind of reminds me of? Like kind of like stigmata or some shit. Yeah, uh, rit ritualist like like seven meets stigmata or something, something like that. Kind of interesting. Oh, that's fascinating. Uh, that temple, the reader, hell ride, karma. Uh, I still can't believe they have cheap thrills, man. High voltage, 
the tournament, which I know we've definitely seen before, but what a cast, man. Robert Carlyle, Kelly Hugh, Ving Rhames. I've actually, I think I've almost seen this movie before, man. It looks, it looks kind of familiar to me. Death by Elimination. Like, I, I love that. Like, the tur- tournament and, you know, winner takes all. I, I like that idea, man. And I got to admit, dude, Kelly Who, talk about a really underrated badass actress, man. She's actually really cool, dude. I really loved her in a lot of stuff. Um, obviously, X2 I thought she was really great in. There's this really great horror flick that she's in with Devin Sawa that I really love, man. And Ken Foree is in it. I don't remember the, the name of it offhand, man, but um it's so good i really like that that movie so much she's badass in that film man and she's badass here too and actually crazy enough i also remember her actually one of the first times i ever saw her was in friday the 13th jason takes manhattan she got killed by jason on 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 the cruise ship on the dance floor that was a great death man literally picked her up and slammed her to the ground man what a great kill man kelly who that's so good man Oh, you know what the name of that movie is, actually, with, with um, Ken Foree and everything? The Devil's Den. Now I remember it. It's kind of like a take on From Dust Till Dawn, where they're, they're in this sort of almost like strip club, and and basically they, they have to fight against these sort of, of ghouls and demonic entities. And it's so great, dude. Like, it's kind of a little cheap, but I think it's really fun, man. She's just cool, man. I, I think she's badass kind of underrated actually there toxic shark which we've seen before god toxic shark and croczilla really <laughs> oh bad oh not nazi overlord with really bored tom sizemore <laughs> god uh bad oh blue elephant dark was the night pretty solid movie Truth or Dare, and Heaven and Hell, as you've definitely seen before. My God, man, talk about a crazy amount of physical media, man. This, that, all of that stuff here as well. Jesus. Talk about a mega stack. Dollar Tree this time, guys? Dude, they did not disappoint at all. Man, talk about the dollar deals delivering, baby, and they delivered in a big, bad way. Well, 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 guys, I am going to bring this back to the kind folks over at the Dollar Tree here and thank them for letting me show off all of this physical media goodness. Holy shit. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 15 boxes of physical media. Holy shit, guys. Oh my god, man. And being in the back room one more time at the Dollar Tree ain't half bad, man. Damn, did Dollar Tree definitely deliver with a damn good sale this time around, guys. Wow, holy shit. Some of these titles, man, I was not expecting, dude. Wow. The Bizarre, The Ridiculous, The Hollywood Blockbusters, The B-Movie Cheese, it all delivered, baby. Damn, dude. Dare I say quite the Dollar Tree love this time around, guys. Well, guess I'll uh, go and um, check out. Think I should buy all these? If only. <laughs> I ain't made of money, man, but uh, I will pick out some of the ones that I think are worthy, and uh, I think uh, I think my physical media out and about movie hunting experience I think I've definitely had my fill this time around. How about we head home and finish the glorious Dollar Tree video? Oh, baby, I am back now, guys, from the Dollar Tree experience. Holy crapola. Wow. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I was not expecting 15 boxes of media okay oh my god in fact one of the employees was like wow this is the biggest haul that we have ever gotten at the dollar tree before 15 boxes they were like wow this we've never had this this many and i'm like 
Holy shit, man. That, that was incredible. I only wish that they could always get it in 15 boxes of media. Are you kidding me? And I actually think the reason why they got in as much media as they did, to be honest with you, I think the reason why ultimately is because it had been a little while since the last sale. You know, we've been so used to the sale happening every like few weeks, but actually it's been a little longer now and it took a little bit a little bit more before we got another sale, but I think that was only a good thing. Because I think a lot of people ended up always being like, oh my god, this sale happens every few weeks, there's so much media. But after a certain while, I think what was happening was there wasn't as much variety out there. And not as much new stuff that people were seeing. And so I think that the turnover rate was just not as good for the Dollar Tree. Yes, the sale is happening much more frequently, but at the same time, I think that was to the detriment of the Dollar Tree because there was just there was just so much that was there as far as sales and every few weeks and just trying to get in as much media and it just wasn't really working out really well. So I kind of get it. I understand it. And so I was actually really happy that they took their time and didn't do another sale like right away. I was actually really happy about that, man. And so when when I got the the call by you know one of the people at the Dollar Tree saying hey you know we we did get in the the boxes of media we're gonna put it out do you do you want to see it before we before we put it out I said I said sure I said okay man and so they tell me to come to the Dollar Tree to check out media I'm I'm going I got out of work and I I like raced my ass to the Dollar Tree man so that's what 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 I did man and I couldn't have been happier dude I mean. I think a lot of people are always anticipating this sale, and this time around, man, did not disappoint. Did not disappoint at all, man. Talk about great variety, some really genuine and fascinating titles out there, a lot of co co collection DVDs, so much stuff to digest, man. So, you know, yes, sometimes you want to sale very quickly. But I actually like the fact that they took their time, they waited a little bit longer than they normally have recently, and I think the variety this time absolutely paid off, guys. 110% absolutely paid off. It was awesome. It really was awesome, man. Oh, pretty damn cool. And, uh, well, speaking of awesome, I think uh, I picked up a title or two, dare I say. How about we check out what I picked up? Looky, looky what I got, baby. Good amount of DVDs and a good amount of Blu-rays, man. Ooh, I picked up a great haul from the Dollar Tree. So let's get into it, shall we? Let's start with the DVDs. And the first title I got is Legend of the Black Scorpion. Yes, look at this, man. You know, when I was looking at it, I was like... Okay, I like the Zhang from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You know, Yen Wo Ping is doing the the choreography for the, for the fight scenes. The same one that did Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, Matrix, all those great ones. And I'm kind of a sucker for movies that are similar to Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. I can't say, like, they're all as good as Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. But I'm willing to give them a chance, man. And... I almost feel like I might have heard about this film at some point years ago, but I never probably watched it. But I am very fascinated to give it a, a look, man. Maybe it might be good. If it is, I'll see if there's a, there's a blue Blu-ray. It might be worth worth uh, putting in the collection, possibly. For a dollar? Why the hell not, man? So I picked up that. I also ended up picking up the DVD of the Ip Man Origins. And, come on, I... I kind of had to, guys. I mean, I am a sucker for anything Ip Man now. I mean, I, I truly am. I am so in love with those Ip Man movies. I mean, I really am, dude. I have the actual 
Ip Man box set, man. And with all four of the movies on 4K, some Donnie Yen love, I really, really love, love this. I also have the Blu-ray of... Of Ip Man, The Final Fight, which is actually really, really great, man. Ip Man, The Final, the Final Fight it is really cool, too. So I figured, oh, my God, more Ip Man goodness at the Dollar Tree? I, I have to give it a look. I can't say that it's going to be good or bad yet, but if it's Ip Man, I got to give it a go, man. I mean, I hate to say it, not everything Ip Man is perfect. That newer movie that just came out not too long ago was a real, real crapper, but... Hey, I'm going to give it a chance, man, and it could deliver, possibly. For a dollar, why not, if man goodness? Come on. I got that. I also ended up getting the DVD of The End of Violence. Yes, I got this one because, let's be real, man, what a cast. Gabriel Byrne, Andy McDowell, Bill Pullman. I just like the, the fact of this guy, a filmmaker that had a very traumatic experience and the idea of, of the creepiness of s surveillance and people watching you. There's something about it that's, that's really kind of gets under your skin. I've never heard of this one. Fantastic actors in it. I had to give it a chance, man. So figure why not for a dollar, man. Why not, why not give it a go? I also ended up getting the DVD of... High Rise with my man, ah, uh, Loki himself, Tom Hiddleston. Man, I had to. I had to give this one one a look because, you know, as much as I like him as Loki, I I've loved him in other movies like Kong Skull Island and and a few other ones that that he he did. He did this great biopic about about this country western star, which was really awesome. He did a great job in that, and so I. I, I love him as an actor. I wanted to give him a chance. And also, there's some also really great actors in here. I mean, Jeremy Irons, Elizabeth Moss, Sienna Miller. I mean, there's some really solid actors in this thing. And I like the idea of being trapped in this building and how, like, well, we're all supposed to be friends, but, you know, who's who's more valuable? Who's more rich, you know, and, and you know, sort of fighting over power. There's something about it. When you're locked in a closet, closet type of space and you know, every, now you're starting to turn on everybody, and it's so great, man. It, it, this could be a real winner. I'm going to give it a chance, man. With the slip for a dollar, why the hell not, man? They got that. I also ended up getting the Shutter exclusive of Boar. Yeah, man. I, I got this because I've heard okay things about it. I, I really have, man. And there's something about being in the Australian Outback being hunted by these carnivorous animals that are literally just going to tear your flesh and, and eat you. And it's, it's, it's good. I mean, come on. As a horror fan, as a lover of, of horror cinema, I've seen a lot of really great killer animal movies. And I'm hoping Boris just sort of satisfies that sort of killer animal bloodlust that I, that I have, man. I'm just really ho hoping it does. I mean... Like I said, some people say it's really good. Other people say, yeah, not so much. But I'm going to give it a chance, man. I truly am. So maybe it'll deliver. Maybe it won't. But for a dollar, a Shutter exclusive, why not give it a chance, man? So went for that one. And last but certainly not least in the DVDs, I got a Shutter original of Gwen. Yes, I did, guys. And... You know, again, it was interesting. Like I said, I I saw this, you know, at a lot of different videos from a lot of other people last Dollar Tree sale. And I could not find this at any of the Dollar Tree locations in my area whatsoever. I don't know whether people had already bought it or none of the ones in my area actually got them in stock. But, hey, if it's not there in one Dollar Tree sale, well, maybe it'll be there in the next. And it definitely was, man. This one looks like some interesting religious horror, and I kind of like that. I, I'm, I'm, I do like some interesting religious horror from time to time. Like, there's that recent movie, The Reckoning, that I really loved. Of course, you gotta say, obviously, The Exorcist and a few other really great movies in there as well. There's something about the idea of of praying to a god or believing in a god, and that faith being completely upended by this this 
this satanic entity. There's there's something really very fascinating about that, really creepy, that I've always been sort of attracted to in a lot of ways. And Gwen looks very interesting. I don't know if it's exactly that, but I like the imagery. I like the synopsis. There's something about it that I think could really get under under your skin. So I am definitely looking forward to, to Gwen giving it a chance. I mean, for a dollar again, why the hell not, man? So I got that. Now on to a little Blu-ray love, with the first Blu-ray pickup being the Dimension Extreme release of Hail Ride. Yeah, look at this, man. I may have heard of this movie at some point, but I know I've never watched it, man. And it's kind of interesting. One of those Quentin Tarantino Presents movies, and I was kind of looking at it more. I'm like Michael Madsen, Vinnie Jones... John Carradine, fucking Dennis Hopper is in this thing. What a wild movie, man. A rebellious gang going and taking re re revenge. It's It looks wild. It looks really interesting. And it looks like really great, pulpy action, badass goodness, man. It really does. So... You know what? I may have a good time enjoying this one. I really do. I mean, for a dollar, why not give it a chance, man? I mean, really. So, I am looking forward to this. And my God, man, it's been a long time since I've had anything in the collection that is Dimension Extreme. Oh, my God, man. I, I remember those old school days. Damn. It's crazy to see that at the Dollar Tree. The next Blu-ray that I picked up is... Sushi Girl, and I so had to pick this up, guys. No lie, I had to. I really liked the movie, and I had it on DVD from the Dollar Tree, and I thought to myself, I'll probably never, ever find it on Blu-ray for a great price. I'll just have the DVD. And then, lo and behold, the one copy that I find at the Dollar Tree, and I'm like, oh my God. I'm like, I have to snatch this up before somebody else does. It's a really great, wacky, weird as hell, out there sort of action flick, man. So, so bizarre. But it's it's really fun, man. And my God, talk about the actors in here. Tony Todd, uh, man, Mark Hamill. I mean, some really great performances here. I'm so happy to get the, the Blu-ray of this. I mean, for a dollar, this is a steal, man. I'm so happy to get this. Sushi Girl, man. God, I love that weird and... Bizarre t titles. Gotta love them. Then, I picked up the Blu-ray edition of Abduction with my man, Scott Atkins. Well, actually, he's slowly becoming my man. I mean, my God, he is... He's pretty damn cool. I'm not gonna lie. He has made some really cool, kick-ass movies. I'm liking him more and more every single movie that I watch him in. You know, I remember... As I said earlier, not really liking the guy, thinking he was sort of a poor man's Van Damme or something like that. And, you know, I think the reason why I even started to give him a chance was he was in Ip Man 4. And I watched Ip Man 4 and I loved that movie and I thought, oh my god, man, he's really great in this. He's badass, evil as shit, I love him. And then, you know, um getting so some other titles that he was in, seeing that ninja double feature, and I'm like, okay, this guy's winning me over. Slowly but surely, he really is. And so literally now, anything that he does, I'm kind of going to give a chance to. I really am. And this is a weird one. Like, the cover does not present what the synopsis is this alien race that he they have to stop from taking over the human race but i mean come on it's scott atkins so like like the alien race has this like no hope <laughs> they're totally gonna get their asses kicked and i cannot wait to check it out man it i think it's gonna be a good one man scott atkins god i can't believe another like like martial arts actor I, i'm starting to get into man ah, i thought i was done with that shit Oh, damn. Once I thought I was out, somebody pulls me back in, damn it. <laughs> and apparently it's Scott Atkins. What can I tell you? Then the next title that I got is the Blu-ray DVD combo pack of Nick and Nora's Infinite 
playlist. I had to get this, guys. Are you kidding me? This is a steal for a dollar. I, I said it, and I've said it over and over again. Anytime I talk about Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, this is an underrated romantic comedy. It really honestly is, man. You know, I like old school romantic comedies. I really do. Whether it's Sleepless in Seattle or You've Got Mail, uh, I mean, a bunch of old school stuff, Murphy's Romance, you name it. And, you know, Nick and Nora's Infinite Playlist, I don't know if it reminds me of the old school stuff, but I like the chemistry between the actors. I like the music. I I like the love story. I think it's a very genuine movie, and it's very underrated, man. Not many people really talk about it, but the ones who really do, really do love this film, and I definitely enjoy it. I've never had it in the collection before, so I figured, God, for a dollar on Blu-ray? This is like a must-have, man. It, it, it had to. It was like an instant buy, dude. Great flick, and one of the only few films that I actually like, Michael Sarah in, crazy enough. Nick Norris in that playlist. Pretty damn underrated. I also ended up picking up the Blu-ray of Cheap Thrills. Yes! Did you guys think I wasn't gonna buy this? I mean, come on, man. I mean, I had to. This is a crazy great steal and a great find at the Dollar Tree for only one dollar, man. It's a wild. It's a really crazy, ridiculous, over-the-top, wild movie, but it's really fun. I love the acting in here. The The blood and gore is really great. Man, it's this This is a fun one, and to find this for a dollar is, is one hell of a steal, man. Damn. One hell of a bargain, dude. Picking up cheap thrills. Great. Then, last, but certainly not least, I picked up the Blu-ray of... John dies at the end. Oh, spoiler alert. <laughs> but, oh man, but this is a really, really weird, bizarre, I can't say that it makes a hell of a lot of sense, because it really doesn't at times, but boy, you go on this wild ride that is just undeniably fun and, uh, and amusing and entertaining as hell, man. I, I just love this. The actors in here are, are great. Clancy Brown, Paul Giamatti, man. I love the weird the weird creatures and the sci-fi aspect. And come on, Don Coscarelli, Mr. Phantasm himself, you know, Beastmaster, Bubba Hotep. I mean, the guy knows how to make weird movies, okay? And this is, this is great. So, wow, I've never had in the collection, but for a dollar on Blu-ray, this... I had to pick up, man. So I got that. Oh my God, the Blu-ray haul was awesome. The DVD haul was great, guys. I think uh, I think my trip to Dollar Tree was pretty plentiful, wouldn't you say? And that does it for the Dollar Tree Mega Experience. Oh my God, man, this this was great. I mean, mind you, I only went to one location, but again, 15 boxes, and trust me, guys, I am going to go to other Dollar Tree locations and check out some of the, the media. I have a feeling that most of what I'm going to find in the other stores is pretty much going to be a lot of the same stuff that you saw in this video, but... I am going to look, and if there's anything interesting, who knows, maybe on and out and about, or maybe on some other videos, you may be seeing some other trips to the Dollar Tree. Maybe, it's possible. You never know, guys. But honestly, go and check out your Dollar Tree locations. I'm serious. This time around, you will find some really great, great, unique gems out there. You really will. And what's really awesome about the sale, by the way, is that... Yes, there's some really great selection that I had at my store this time around, but guys, when you go to other states in other different parts of the country, there's different media. There's different titles that you're going to find. So you may see something here with me in New York State and maybe in California or somewhere else. There's going to be a few different titles as well. That's what's kind of genuine and unique about this is that... You never know really what you're going to find 
at the Dollar Tree locations until you actually go in and literally check the media out, man. And you will find some really wild, bizarre titles, the Hollywood blockbusters, indie gems, movies that literally, and I love saying it, movies that make you go, what the fuck? <laughs> Oh, and there are plenty of them. There definitely is. Oh, man. But it's so great. And I've always said it that, you know, the haul that I got, I got all of that for $13. Okay, literally all of that I got for $13. You cannot go on eBay. You cannot go on Amazon.com. You cannot go on a lot of these sites and buying physical media and make out with that kind of haul for $13. You cannot do it. And that's another thing why this sale is, is very genuine. Because, you know, you might be able to give a chance to a movie that you wouldn't have otherwise. Simply because it's a dollar. You go into Walmart or you go online and you pay 10 or $15 for a movie. And you think to yourself, I don't want to give that a chance. And if I don't like it, I'm screwed out of all that money. Here... You can pay a dollar, and if you like it, man, you found a real gem to put in your collection. And if you don't like it, well, you don't feel so bad because you only spent a dollar. So, in a lot of ways, this sale is really unique and very interesting to give movie lovers a chance to pick up some titles that they didn't know about, movies that they've wanted in their collection for a long time, that they've been holding out on. And it gives a lot of people a chance to pick up movies and physical media that wouldn't otherwise do it but this sale gives them a unique opportunity to get into physical media and become a lover of physical media simply out of the fact that you're only paying a dollar i mean truly it, it is a sale that's worth it for everybody movie lovers casual fans alike man it's it's one that everybody can really enjoy and everybody can find something that is worth at least a pickup man this is a great one, and this sale definitely proves it. Man, the Dollar Tree is back, baby, and the sale is flowing, so definitely go to your Dollar Tree locations and hope you pick something good up. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, definitely give it the thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Check out the other movie hunting Dollar Tree videos, the Blu-ray DVD Tuesday videos I do every single week. The movie reviews with my friends, live streams, Blu-ray pickle videos, and much more. If you are a lover of movies and physical media, hit subscribe and become a part of the Film Fan Nation. I want to thank my wonderful subscribers out there watching the videos, the likes, the great comments, the feedback. You guys really are a lover of movies and physical media, and you really have embraced me as part of this great movie-loving community, and I can't thank you guys enough. You guys really give me the support and love, and I hope I give the love right back to you. Truly, I do. Oh, so, so, so good, guys. Another sale down. Oh, my God, man. And what a damn good one, indeed. It definitely was, man. Make sure you go to your Dollar Tree, then check out the media. I guarantee you you won't be disappointed. That's for damn sure, especially this time around, guys. And I will see you back next time for a brand new Dollar Tree experience. Take care, everybody. And remember, I'd buy that for a dollar.